Hello everyone and welcome to APM Research Sigils. On the panel with me today are One Conscience and Rose. If you are new to APM Research, you will find that our research and decodings indicate we live in a technological construct that has very intelligent design. Geo, Petro, Hieroglyphs, Sigils, Cartouche and even some sacred geometries are one and the same. Tactical type schematics of technologies relating to the underworld Technologies that are responsible for creating and moving luminaries and are involved in pretty much most of nature itself. So hello one conscience, hello Rose, and hello to all you fine people in chat. Hello. Hi everyone. <laughs> right. I'll add you I'm now gonna hand you over to one because she's gonna introduce you to how we start to decode sigils. Over to you, one. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm not sure how many people are familiar with these sigils. Um, let me get to my right place. So I'm not sure how many people have seen these. Um, so these are the uh, they're the Anakian sigils. They're also known as the Solomon seals. Okay. And what we want to talk about is how they are part of a mechanical system. Okay. And just explain it. Um, why we think this and what we can do is show you uh, nowadays some stuff that relates to it. Okay. So if you take a good look at these things, they, I mean, most people are like, oh, they're weird and, you know, they don't understand them. But when you compare them to, say, electrical schematics, um, what you're seeing here is every little piece of these sigils broke down and it shows you exactly what they are and what they do. So I won't really go through all these. I'm just going to let you read through them yourself, but these are pieces of electrical components, which is a technology. And like I said, when you compare them to these sigils, these are just the individual little pieces of each one. We can go to this other page and they're, they're more little pieces, right? Do you guys see this? Yeah, I'll go to you one. Okay. So, so yeah, what we're seeing here is processes. So if you break these down into the schematics, it would tell us exactly what each piece of these sigils are, what they do, and how they work. So, I guess we can go through some of them, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. They, they may have changed things over time to try and disguise the fact, but... It's pretty obvious to us. These all relate to the same thing uh, that I mentioned earlier, isn't it? Various yeah. glyphs and designs and things. It's this, you know what you're looking at is different cultures' depictions of the same thing. They just expressed it differently. Is all. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So what we're looking at is, yeah, processes. These are technological processes. So I'm going to stop sharing and we can go through some of these because they all have names. I'll just screen share my side then, um, one, yeah? Yeah. We can bring the, num the numbered sigils up. Yep. So we'll bring up each sigil and we will give you a brief description of what it is they do. Right, so the first one is ball. 
Um, so Baal is the head of infernal powers. He's a king. He's known as a king. Um, he is the first king in the East. Um, just like some of the descriptions in the Bible, he has three heads. And he commands 66 legions. And he is one of the seven princes. Do you guys have anything to say about that? Yeah, certainly. Yeah, what I can see in that image straight away. Um, we're going to get deeper into the, the crosses in the next video we do. But for now, what we're going to do is reference the crosses we're seeing these images with magnets. To me, they represent magnets, these crosses that you're going to see across a lot of these images. So straight away, you've got two two sides of a magnet there. So, you know, what, you, what it's showing you here straight away is there's magnets involved in this sigil. The other parts, I'm not sure. You know, you'd have to, you could go through modern day schematics, but I'm pretty sure they would change the design and things to try and hide what these really mean. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get little pieces out of these bits and pieces that we can relate to technological terms. But yeah, two magnets noticed in Baal straight away. You got anything to add to that, Rose? Yeah, because one of the things I've noticed looking at the Egyptian hieroglyphs, the way they hold certain items in different positions for on and off or um, different type of processes is similar. So straight away from the first one and the fifth one underneath it and the one to the right on number four you see that the crosses are in very distinct uh positions again like 10 to 2 and um four and seven or is it five and seven and then um they'll be significant uh later on i think as tying them all together yeah the two at the bottom could actually relate to grounding or more connections <laughs> yes yeah definitely back to you on for number two okay number two uh is agrius and he is a duke so he rules the eastern zone as well and he is served by 31 legions so what he is known for is he can make runaways come back and he also rules over those that stand still so when we think about that and other things that we've done um when we did the seraphims Weren't they the ones that stand still? They don't move around. Yeah, they certainly were. The stationary ones and moving ones. Yeah, 100% of the one. Yeah. So that's the information I have on him. Um, and I say him and hers in the sense that pretty much we name our technologies as we give them, you know, male or female. Sexy yeah. Character, usually, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Which we, everyone does that, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I just like to point out the like the arc crescent shape at the bottom, considering what you said that it's they're at a standstill and some of the other stuff that we're working on. It's like an upside down vertical halo maybe at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, again, there's a magnet in there. You've got these set kind of loops. They could be spirals at the side. You know, that one on the left-hand side, it does look like it's spiraling upwards to the sides. So we're going to point out a little bit more of these spirals and how they how they narrow and such in the next video because we've got a lot of magnetic stuff to get into detail with, which we haven't covered yet, but. It doesn't matter about that for now, you know. We can we can see what it's relating to in a lot of these designs. So we'll we'll carry on. Okay, so 
the next one is Vasago. Um, Vasago rules over 26 legions. Um, Vasago also can tell the events of the past and future. So we also have to keep in mind that some of these watchers that are talked about in scriptures are put here to simply record the events of our world. And that's kind of what those these guys that um, can tell you about the past, present, and future perhaps are, are part of these the system of watchers that um, is here recording every event that ever happens. Um, yeah. I would also say probably be, what it's recording is the passage of time because we're looking at timed uh, events going on. Which is, you know, what you can relate to with your quakes one. Yeah. Uh, events, events switching on and off as luminaries go across them. Yep. That's a good yeah. way to put it. Yeah. So, you know, it's marking a time, a timed event. So it's going to happen. So, yeah, you know, you're looking at mechanical and electrical, really. The mechanical and electrical pro, uh, processes going on here. There has to be. Yep. His yeah, office. They're... Sorry. Sorry. I'm just saying they've got to be interchangeable, haven't they? Because everything is basically representing the same thing just done in a slightly different way so yeah because now that you said that his office is to declare the things of the past and the things to come um, <laughs> he also discovers all hidden or lost things wow yeah, amazing wording. We'll have to. What we'll have to do as well is look at the, some of the etymology on these words that they use, because they might not, you know, mean what they used to mean. We've, we've noticed that with a lot of words, they've been flipped to re, uh, present the represent the oh, quite opposite of what it used to mean. So, yeah. you know, there's that, that to take into consideration with this wording. Which we'll, you know, we'll obviously get to when we find come across certain words. We, we might want to double check what that word actually means to get the real, the true meaning for it. Yeah, and just also just something similar as well. Be, um, alchemic wise, the record keeper is considered like the clear quartz crystal, and that is also used within almost every clock uh, to keep time. So, just going to throw that little. Tip it in there. Don't that. <laughs> and of course, all clocks used to be astrological until they changed them to this new uh, way of do, uh, measuring time using uh, the Omega um, and everything else. So, again, removing it from the flat plane stationary. Um, sundial that we all used to carry around and have in plain sight everywhere to the more regular everyday you know hidden behind different shapes and things to the new way of measuring time but in funny enough still using quartz in order to do that sorry lovely information was nice work Thank you. And the look at the design itself as well. You know, to, when we're looking at sigils and cartouche and things like that, people, what we're looking at really is, scripturally speaking, the one hundred and forty-four thousand sealed below. You know, a lot of people think this references people, one hundred and forty-four thousand people. No, in our research, people come last. Technology comes first because this is what the creator of this technology was teaching everyone around the world. So, you know, we, we anything we look at, technology gets factored in first. How does it factor in with this world and its workings? You know, we're looking at world mechanics. Everyone around the world looking at these glyphs was being taught world mechanics on a grand scale, and it seemed to have just all of a sudden stopped. So, you know, we're picking up where where our ancestors have left off, really. You know, we're trying to pick up and follow the path they led that they left for us. That's where we're at. Over to you, Juan. Okay, so I'm having trouble finding any information on Sammy Gina.
Yeah, I wouldn't worry too much, you know. I noticed with all these sigils, some of these high numbers, there's some serious gaps in them. So we haven't got a full set of them. You know, what they call a set of 72 isn't actually a full set when you look at some of these. There's numbers higher than these. Uh, we are going to have names and uh, processes missing, it seems. You know, you know, we may never get all of them, but there's, we've got a lot here to look through. And this that one there that you just mentioned, Again, look, you're looking at magnets and that thing at the bottom, to me, it could be an antenna. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you put that on its side, it could even represent a bore, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, upside down, it could be the sun chariot <laughs> boat <laughs> raw. <laughs> and then... Also, it looks like an altarpiece in the Christian face. It looks very similar to a lot of things. It does, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, even it could even represent magnetic data, like you've seen when series overlays up on the map. You know, it goes across and comes back down again. It could even represent magnetic data, things like that. Well, never, you know, I don't think we'll ever truly fully decode all these um, until sometime in the future, perhaps when when there's a big reveal by those that hide it. But for now, you know, all we can, all we can do is give it our best shot. And how it relates to technolo technological processes. Yes. So next is Marboss. Um, so Marboss is a president, and he knows and speaks about um, all secret things or hidden things. Um, he's known for being mechanical, mechanics. He knows about mechanics. Sounds like a mover, doesn't it? It's something involved in moving. When I when I yes. when I first looked at it, I looked at those three dots at the bottom. They reminded me of nodes one, two, and eight. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you got two magnets in there. Yeah. I even get a feeling of movement from it. I know that sounds daft, but like um, the bottom part is spinning. In a so it looks like a cone shape that maybe they're representing. Here's another, you know? here's, here's, here's another option for you guys. Uh, take the take the three dots with the lines going to the dot at the top. You've got a pyramid, and now you've got your king, now you've got your mm -hmm. king and queen shaft sticking out the side. You do, don't you? Yeah, you do. <laughs> so this could, you know, we're going to get more into that into the next video. What that's actually representing, Excellent. but yeah, that reminds me of what the pyramids designed to do. <laughs> Looking at that mm -hmm. now. Back to you one. Yep, I'm looking for the next one. Um, give me a second, sorry. Yeah, no worries, take your time. I have notes all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is why we don't go live uh, very often, people, because there's that much to look through and cross cross reference. It can, you know, it can take a, a one hour stream can take three hours sometimes. Uh, normally, we do this in private chats, and uh, we just make a compiled video out of the, you know, the and cut all the in betweens out so we can get the video down because it's all down to attention span, etc. You know, people's attention span and, and their interests. If we're not if we're, if we're not streaming their interests, then they're going to lose interest pretty quick in the video. Yes. So, um, Valifor, uh, I'm not finding any notes that I have on this one. Some of these, um, you know, they're not forthcoming, so to speak. Yeah. It's just interesting. They don't. Still. A it's an interesting design there. You got the nice spiral there on the right hand side. Yes. 
especially when we compare these to those electrical schematic symbols that I showed in the beginning. You know, it's literally telling us some of these are transformers, some of these are switches. So all those little circles showing on Valifor here, see those? Those are all switching. So those are switches, those little circles. Which is yeah, it, yeah. In the modern know, in the modern terminology, uh, switching mechanisms. You know that could be switching, um, kind of like we're going to present in the next video. So I, you know, I don't want to ruin too much stuff for the next video, but <clears throat> when you think about the switching, yeah. So it, could, it probably represents some kind of a switch. There's definitely uh, energy flow in there. You can see that with the two magnets that's been placed in there. And as for the trumpet looking parts, um, you know, those are you know, just that's if, magnetic. That's if they are, yeah, that's if they are trumpets. You know, yeah, good in fact that's a good uh, good idea to swing to talk about one because what they're calling trumpets might just mean one of the faces on the magnet. Well, and what they show these to be in the electrical schematics are diodes. Yeah, diodes. Mm. So, um, you know, and the squiggly and the weird, crazy lines, those, you know, that's the flow. Yeah. But yeah, these triangular pieces, these are referred to in electrical as diodes. Very um, cool. <laughs> yeah. So let me find... Amon real fast. <laughs> My lists are not in the same order, so I apologize for taking so much time to find each one. <laughs> you got anything to add to that one, Rose? It almost looks like you could stick a key into it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like full on. That top piece could actually be a knuckle duster. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amon is a Marquis. Um, he governs 40 infernal legions. Um, this one is known as a wolf with a serpent's tail that can breathe fire. And again, tells of things of past and future. Reeves fire. Ooh, nice description there. <laughs> yeah. we, could do with it, we could do with the text on screen, really, for that, couldn't we? Yeah, it's easier to look through it all when it's on screen, the text, and I think you decode more doing it that way. But it doesn't matter, you know, it's the, we're here for the sigils, really. And looking at that, it looks like, to me, that design looks like it would be revolving. I don't know why, but it just reminds me of something that should be revolving. And you've got the no, it's with the spirals. You've got the on there. the horizontal, yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it looks like it should be rotating, and them spirals. You know, your left and right hand spirals. That's your left and right hand rule. Like a flywheel. Could very well be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks like yeah it looks like that the, those three things in the background would be revolving around this center bar basically that could a be wrong you know I could, I could be miles up there but <laughs> yeah a fire a fiery um flywheel okay <laughs> that's good yeah um ignition anyone so mm. yeah yeah. So next we have Barbados, which uh, Barbados is an earl or a duke. Um, Barbados has 30 legions underneath of him and also has four kings as companions. Um, again, past and future it has knowledge of past and future. Uh, has the ability to find hidden treasures that have been hidden by enchantments. Um, Navigation appears, system? It appears when the sun is in Sagittarius. 
with four kings and three great platoons as an escort. This is the one helping in science. Lovely, lovely description there. Now to, to get on to kings, let's put kings into proportion here. Uh, the king's reference in scriptures and glyphs and such, uh, in APM's opinion now, represents a primary piece of technology that is, is let's say, in charge of or connected to what they would call probably le lesser sigils or lesser related technologies. So it's the king is in charge of a few groups of other technologies. So you're looking at you know a big group of processes here when it mentions king and the. Uh, Jumping back to the sarcophagi again, the sarcophagi it, to us it relates to a chamber down below. You know, it's not a, it's not relating to a person inside a sealed, man-made um, case. It's relating to a very large room down below. Now the rooms we mentioned, you can jump back to the main times of the the six houses and nine rooms, which it mentions is in the underworld, and even even the name of these keys, you know, the Solomon's keys. Solomon, you're looking at the temple of the sun and moon now. That's what Solomon actually means, the temple of the sun and moon. Solomon. So, yeah, that's a, a little description there about kings and how they actually relate to this. You know, when pe people mention kings and queens and such, straight away, everyone does it. They think of humans. No, we've, we've, not, we, we've got to stay away from the human sector of this because it's nothing to do with humans. Humans are only assuming these identities and processes and creating religions from it in our opinion to hide what it all really means that's my that's my input on that one one yeah yeah because no matter what we need to go back to what things meant originally and our language is completely backwards and and messed up and wrong you know, purposely changed the names of, or the meaning of words so that we can't understand them in our world. And yes. what, how to, how to translate these scriptures and ancient texts, you know, things are opposite. And the image itself, it actually looks like a throne, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it does look like a throne, you know, the back of the seat there. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It really does. Yeah. You got anything to add to that, Rose? Um, yeah, it seems to be like a control element part of it, doesn't it? As opposed to a function, like a a main hub of something i like the way it described with um it was escort is it with companions and um Sag um sagittarius is almost direct is in the um underworld section of the zodiac so it's even suggesting that this part is um in that place in the sagittarian uh, section of the underworld yeah that makes sense. you see you, you do see things like that pop up all the time relating to certain constellations and such yeah, yeah. so what, what it's showing you there you know when that constellation is probably overhead this will activate and do its do its role and yeah. you know, being in charge of legions and things, it's obviously switching other mechanisms and and who knows what on. So yeah, you know, wow. being a king, a king kind of title, it's got to be controlling others. And also, as for the legions, you're right, because when the constellations are you know directly over certain areas, <laughs> that would be the legions that it's in control of at that time, right? Yeah, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? That's the legion yeah. it's controlling. As as they as they revolve around into that sector, it will take over doing what it does. Because the legion could be a constellation. Yeah, it's super easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it you know, be. it could be, or because um, I'm just going to grab it in a minute because we have our regular twelve zodiacal signs, but the Asian is actually used twenty four. 
So um, I'm just going to go and grab that because something's tickling me. I'll be two secs. Yeah, no worries. I'll just scroll it up a little ready for the next piece when Rose is finished with that one. Think anything more to add to that one, Mum? Um, not to Barbados, no. I do on the next one, but I want her to finish what she was going to say <laughs> first. Interesting name as well, Barbados, isn't it? Yeah, because that's islands, right? There's yeah. islands called Barbados. Yeah. Which also could be the legions. I mean, you think of legions, you think of a span, an area. Yeah, you would, yeah. Or a, it's you know, a sector. Yeah, you're right. It's, you know, it's a, like we've seen with the constellations. It's got it's got its own little sector. Well, they all have really, haven't they? They're all got their own little sectors doing what they do and contributing their efforts into making this big mechanism work. I'm noticing nine and ten have the same name, but they're slightly different. Like that's weird. Two processes, yeah. Two. It could even be an on-off switch. Who knows? <laughs> They're definitely switching. Look at the circles on them, but we're moving ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just uh, have a quick look in. So hello everyone in chat. How are you guys today? Danny Skylack said, maybe they're old designs of a ship's wheel imprinted with zodiacal destinations. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that would be very interesting, um, especially when you think about all this occurring in the underworld and we're seeing the electromagnetic projection above. But anyway, go ahead, Rose. Sorry. No, I'm I'm just back. I'm just having a little look while um we talk. Okay, so shall we go on to Paymon? Yeah, let's continue. Yeah. Okay, so Paymon is another king. Um, they say that he is more obedient to Lucifer than any other king. Uh, mind you that Lucifer um, is the bearer of light. He has 200 legions that he rules over. Um, This, this one looks towards the northwest. And click over my other notes. <laughs> um, and from the order of authority. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention Lucifer and the light there, <laughs> but you beat me to it. <laughs> So yeah, it's yeah. obviously related to one of the luminaries, isn't it? It's got a purpose related to one of the luminaries. Uh, it's facing northwest. Interesting that it's you know it's actually giving you a direction it faces. Good information. And what's interesting is I've found two different pieces on this paymon. I, that's why I had to go to two different notes that I made. One says it faces to the northwest, and the other one says to the northeast. So. That could explain the two different photos of the same thing. 
actually. Yeah, and the changes between them. You know, there's a, a, definitely a change between them two directions seen in them sigils. Yeah, I mean, so it's, so it's that... switching in one. It's, it's operating two different ways, isn't it? You know, it's facing one way and doing one process, and then looking the opposite direction and doing something else. Yeah, that makes and sense. And that's replicated in the hieroglyphs as well. Left, right. Yeah. Yeah. Broken arrows. Yeah, because a lot of them are, a lot of them are on opposite sides. You know, you have to remember that, especially when we're facing the east and the west, they're doing two different processes. You know, one is launching to carry the luminaries over and the other is doing a shutdown yeah. to take it back. So, <clears throat> all interconnected. <laughs> <laughs> That'll cover both of them there, won't it? Nine and ten, because it's the same thing doing two different processes, it seems. Obviously, it's got two directions that it's got control of. Very cool. A lot of switching going on with that one when we look at our you know electrical schematics yeah you can see them three dots on there they've like lowered down on the first image and then raised up on the second yes yeah, so it's hmm. adjusting something there it seems a bit of adjustment going on between those two sigils yeah, let's move to the next. Okay, the next is Boer. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, trying to see if I have my... Okay, so... Uh, Boer is described as a great president uh, ruling over 50 legions. Again, appears when the sun is in Sagittarius. Boer teaches natural philosophy. Also teaches about herbs and plants. Um, Boer is actually depicted in the shape of Sagittarius. With the centaur and the bow and arrows. So, well, yeah, isn't that completely funny? relating... Yeah, they're relating Boer to be Sagittarius, pretty much. Well, that's very interesting. FPV, in the back chat, I've just put a couple of photographs of uh, the other constellations associated with uh, Sagittarius that would have been used by the ancients in astrology. And one of them is called the Serpent Bearer, or, or food, of, oh, please forgive me. Afucius, O P H I U C H U S, which rules December the 6th to the 16th. And then you've got the wise centaur or centaurus, November 20th to December 5th. And that's quite interesting. Yeah, I see them most. I won't present, I won't present them here because I've got to fl flip the images that are upside down as they're shown here, but. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we can put them in the uh, the full size video anyway. You know, some more relation and correlations with it. Okay. Yeah. So it, I'll just, nice. just um, carry on. Yeah. So shall I just say quickly what they're meant to rule and represent? Because it's quite it, um. It's very similar to what one was just saying, actually. Yeah, go for it. So um, the first part, November 20th to December 5th, the wise centaur or centaurus is basically Alpha Centauri, also known as Toniman. The main star in the constellation of Centaurus marks the foot of Chiron, the wise centaur, and is the closest star to the heavens to our sun, lying approximately please forgive me, four light years distant. The centaur is a southern constellation and so is best seen from the southern hemisphere between January and May, although Alpha Centauri can be seen in February from the latitude of Florida and Egypt. 
that was worshipped on the Nile and is the third brightest star in the sky, lying due south of the zodiac constellation Virgo, and near Argo Navis, the great ship of the Argonauts, who were brought up by the centaur in his mountain cave. And then the serpent bearer, which is the December 6th to 16th, um, Orpheus, excuse me, part of the constellation of Orpheus, the god of healing, who holds the serpent of medicine and rebirth, lies between Scorpio and Sagittarius on the zodiac band. Like the god of healing, who was slain with a lightning bolt and then vanished to the un this constellation disappears beneath the horizon every autumn and is resurrected, reappears each spring. It is best seen in summer. To find it, locate the bright harp star Vida in the Lyra, a constellation high up near the zenith, nearer the horizon to the south. You will see Ras Alug, the head of the serpent bearer, which is the most important star lying beneath the altar of the eagle in the east, Architerus in Butes to the west. Fantastic info, Rose. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you've done, you've done your own work. And while we're on it, uh, also the word appearing, well, appears, it appears in Sagittarius. Now, obviously, it's time and event again. You know, it will appear, so that means it's not always on or it's not always visible, perhaps. So we're looking at, you know, it appears in Sagittarius. Uh, some of the other words mentioned there, worship. Now, we, what you'll find is Main Street Gate keep saying that the ancients worship the sun, worship this, that, and the other. There's no worship going on here. They fully understood how this worked and worked with it and depicted it everywhere. It's not about worship. It's about understanding. And, you know, we're, we're probably nowhere near what the knowledge they used to have. The knowledge our ancients had is way far beyond what we can possibly comprehend because they clearly understood how this all worked. So, you know, they planned for events and they knew when it was going to happen and everything. This is what all these calendars, and you know, like the main calendar, they were all timed events going on. So, you know, they were expecting things to happen and they knew where it would happen. More references there about the underworld and resurrected. So what you're looking at there, you know, it, the death in scriptural terms is just sh shutting down. It's been switched off and the res resurrection as it's starting back up. Technological speaking, that's, you know, this is what we've got to look at, guys. We're, we're looking at technology switching on, switching off, uh, having control of a certain area, playing a part of a role in something much larger. And the design itself, now if you look at the circle with the four dots in, you see them on our grid. The Nazca, Mandala and Sunspat Star of Peru overlay we use on the world map. And they are very important locations on that grid. So, you know, it's to me that there, that design there is pointing to one of these locations. Which I'm not sure because it doesn't give us a direction, but that is definitely related to one of these key areas on that grid. Yep. Also, looking also in the term of technology, this is also going to represent <clears throat> a multi-conducting cable. Um, it also appears like it ha it's uh, referring to a dual gate, and I'm speaking in electrical terms, um, along with lots of switches. Um, you know, when you look at the schematics, it also kind of lets you know, um, are these open? or closed circuits? Um, do they have multi points where they switch, which means that the energy would go off in different directions? There's a lot of information here. I mean, the, this is would amazing. Would dual dates be something yeah. like dual data, like our broadband at works now? Hmm probably talking to the wrong person about that because I'm not an electrician. <laughs> no, sorry, it's just like when you said like the dual gates, it's like, oh, is that mean like dual flow of information, the way like broadband is meant to work where you can upload and download things at the same time, as well as have a phone call, that would be something similar. Yeah, I mean, so they, that yeah. Is, to my mind, it's... 
yeah, I mean, we didn't get this technology from anywhere. I mean, they they took this stuff and they've put it into our world. You know, they talk about bringing stuff to surface. Well, that's exactly what they've done. They've brought it up and into our world and we use it all the time. Right? It's the way I see it. Me too. It's just reversed engineering, isn't it? It's not new invention at all. No, I'm on. Hold on a sec. One call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. There's, they, there's nothing that they've invented. They take credit for all this stuff, but this stuff has been around. This stuff has been around for a very long time. Um, you know, we have at least the known one known reset and you know we lost all this information but when we go back i mean we were a very technologically uh, intelligent world of the past they lie to us and say you know cavemen and this and that and, but what we did was reinvent things and relearn it resurface it definitely yeah, that's what we've been highlighting, guys. You know, you look at Walter Russell's work, uh, Nikola Tesla's work, it's reverse engineering and scaling down to a human scale where they can, you know, work with this technology and produce our own. That's exactly what we're looking at. If you look from, through some of our older videos, the Angel Technologies video, for instance, where you can see Tesla was involved with particle accelerators. And, and you're looking there as far back as the 1800s and probably beyond, you know, who was before Nikola Tesla? How long has this been going on? It seems to be a process of everyone knew everything, all of a sudden it's all gone and start all over again. Yet someone someone is keeping all this knowledge to themselves and changing languages, meanings of words, you name it. It's just it's just a big program going on and hiding how this world works. Yeah. Um, so the next one is Gusion. <laughs> Uh, Gusion sees past, present, and future. Uh, he's known as a duke and rules over 40 legions. Um, he shows meaning to all questions asked. Yeah, that's interesting word, you know, shows meaning to all questions asked. <laughs> like he's got all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well. <clears throat> and again, in the electrical components, this is a switching. You know, it has four switches that we can see. Um, and to me, it looks like it would be open switches open currents because of the way they're laid out anybody that is fluent in electricity would probably understand what we're talking about very much so yeah and they are connected to somebody at the top which could actually be amplifiers <laughs> when you look at those they, they remind you of the shape of a speaker don't they Right. I'm not, I'm, not I mean. say, I'm not saying they are speakers, mind. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's meant to, it's going to amplify something in that direction, doesn't it? Yes. Um, and and it, you yeah, know, it definitely looks like an, even like an instrument. Yeah. You know, like a trumpet or something. The way the the keys move. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. You're okay. Um. Also, you can look at it in terms of like relays. You know, I'm referring to this electrical schematic as I talk about the electrical components of this stuff. But, um, but yeah, um, you know, the second page of schematics, that's exactly you said amplifier. That's exactly what. They're, these triangles are also referred to. They're referred to as diodes, and they're referred to as amplifiers. Um, let's see. Yeah. 
Some of them are amplifiers. Um, and some of them are magnetic amplifiers. Yeah, and it's kind sense. of depending on when we look at it, how the lines are placed on them. So this one has one line coming out of the point and um, so that is a magnetic amplifier. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to decode these and learn this on the fly as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like everybody else. So. Yeah. yeah, we haven't, we haven't um, done a test run on this. This is live. <laughs> yeah. So in a way, everybody's kind of joining in on one of our private chats. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, this, this, is, this is what we do, guys. You know, we sit and go through things and discuss what it actually relates to and where the etymology fits in and how the glyph fits into a world model. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I need to find the next one, so. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss the image while, while it's on screen anyway. Again, you know, I'm still looking at um, magnetics there again with the crosses. And there seems to be like a little upside down heart attached to the magnet. Oh, you're on the wrong sigil. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, the, the one to the left of it. <laughs> oh, I'm too early. Oh, gosh. Okay, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah Node 1287, Andrew. We're on 13. <laughs> oh. No, we're not. Not yet. We're on 12. No. Oh, are we still on 12? Yeah. We haven't moved to 13. That's the next one. I'm right. getting excited right. about 13. <laughs> <laughs> but we can move on to 13. I found the, the information now. So, um, Gusion, before we leave it, though, was is definitely uh, some kind of a magnetic switching going on, just to sum it up. <laughs> Next is Citri. So now we're on 13. Um, Citri is a great prince, reigns over 60 legions. Um, Citri is depicted as the face of a leopard with the wings of a gri griffith. Okay. And this one is a frequency that creates love. Venus and luminary, anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a frequency that creates love was that uh, one? Yeah, I mean, it said that Citri creates love, so I'm gonna put the frequency part in there <laughs> <laughs> because we are talking about. Well, you could always reword love as you know harmony. It's for balance and out purposes, perhaps. love harmony you know you're looking at a balance there aren't you some kind of a balance or could they way off <laughs> um, native said what if they was earth as a huge power cell and i want to let them know that they're probably right on um earth is a huge power grid and what these things are is all of the little processes well they're not little all of the massive processes that are going on below, which is giving us our above, our skies, our heavens, and all of the events that occur on earth. You know, everybody talks about, um, you know, flat earth and this and that, but what they don't tell you is why. They're not, no one's giving the why. Why do these things occur? You know, why do we see our luminaries? Why anything? There's no whys involved. They just give you little information and facts, but no one explains why. We're explaining why. When you look at this in the terms of an electrical grid, magnetism, you can explain easily why things occur. 
Yes, 100% one. You know, the why, there has to be a cause. You know, that there is a cause and effect. We're seeing the effects and everyone keeps explaining the effects, but they're never presenting the cause. So, you know, the cause is what we're looking at. We can see what, that it's technological based and we're breaking down, you know, each cause and effect that we can. You'll never get them all because looking at it, it's too many, it's too big and there's too many pieces to the jigsaw. But we, you know, we, what we're looking at here, we, we have got a big chunk of the jigsaw already and it's just trying to break down and show people what it's relating to. You know, that's all we can do is say, uh, yeah, you know, we're looking at technological processes and this is the cause. And also the reason why people might want to hide it. Free energy for all, free health for all, happiness and abundance. I'll, I'll be right back, guys. Two minutes. Okay. So, also looking at Citri. Um, let's see. I'm just going to assume for a while that arcs could be luminaries just for the time being. As one way of looking at things, just as a side note, just. Yeah. Yeah, I could agree with that. Yeah. Yep. So with Citri, we have lots of good information. But <laughs> um, you know, we're looking at switching and definitely uh, magnetic um This is definitely magnetic am amplified, you know, and because of the arc at the bottom, it says that it's amplified with a bypass. Ah. Oh. So it can go between the two areas, a bypass. Yeah. It can go around the arc. Yeah. And, and bypass that center point. Yes. So. Okay. Some, I'm learning as well. So. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. Let's see. Morning Dew says, do sigils represent frequencies of these actually solid objects that exist somewhere? Well, our grid is definitely a solid object below, right? And I would say that these magnetics and, and switch points are probably solid as well. I mean, I can't say that. I've never been below the earth surface. But <clears throat> this stuff occurs, you know, and we see it in the forms of earthquakes and such. We see it in the forms of our luminaries in the heavens. Ancient texts say the, the heavens are the roadmap to the underworld. So when we look at it in that sense, as above, so below, what we see above is down below. You know, I would say that it's definitely solid objects down there that are um, amplifying and carrying this energy along. That's just what I think. Yeah, solid objects as in technology, technologies and processes and passing over of, um, it's, how can you word that now? You know, when it's, it says, say something was aiding, assisting the sun going across the equator, you, you know, you're going to have technology switching on, which we can relate to earthquakes. They do track, they do follow luminaries across the map, as one conscience has showed us a few times now with the quake information. And, you know, some switch on, some switch off. You can look at the magnetic data overlays that we've used previously from series. And we've got some new information coming up in the in the next video that we're going to show you with other events you can see and record yourself in the sky that relate to what we're talking about. But yes, you know, exciting times, really good information coming out. And now we know what we're looking at. We know what to record and where. Um, so let's go to the next one, which is Belath. Um, Belath is a terrible king who has 85 legions under his command. 
Belath is known to ride a war horse and all kinds of music is heard before him. Um, according to some texts, Ham was the first to invoke him after the flood. Um, Mars. It, it's talking about Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I kind of thought that too because of the war. The war horse, right? Yeah, and then as soon as and negative, he was few, he was a you know terrible ruler, and then as soon as you said Ham was the first to invoke him, well there you go. Lovely information. Mars. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which also rules copper, so it could be in a, uh, creating an element, or it could be uh, the luminary you never it or it could be an intertwined meaning of the two this one also says which is very interesting that it it has to be handled in a triangle and turned to the southeast and it comes from the order of power the triangle to me is suggesting you know things get amplified like we were talking before, amplification, the triangle. If it's pointing southeast, then it's getting its energy from the southeast, and the design of that triangle is going to expand it out of the way, you know, ecliptic expansion, as we've used before. You've got compression and expansion going on here electrically. You have to look at it as compression, expansion, and all those kind of processes going on because it will need, you know, power, electricity uh, to, to do what it does. So, yeah. That makes sense, you know, it's pointing in a certain direction, and to me it's telling me it's getting its energies from that direction. Um, also, we're looking at these two, 14 and 15, again, have the same name, if you look at those, just like that other set of them. Um, yeah, that's what they have. <laughs> yeah, so when so that, one's do playing, that... that one's playing two roles then, isn't it? It's got two roles to do. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> You can see the change. And it's got it, hearts again. Yep. The heart being as like a heartbeat, you know, you can go to Roy's kind of work where he's experimenting and where he wired in a, a little light bulb so he knows when his mechanism is running, it gives it a little heartbeat so he knows it's running. It just flickers away the light. So, the, you know, heartbeat to me would represent, yes, there's a, there's a pulse coming through, there's power, you know, run. <laughs> Definitely. Interesting that second image as well, number 15, how it makes the heart bigger and further down. Switching mechanism, perhaps. That kind of co kind of covers 40 and 15, that doesn't it? If you're looking at the same thing over there, but something's changing across the two images. So Barry wants to know, did he miss how this ties into APM? Um, well, do you want APM. Me to repeat? Yeah. Go on, go on, you do it. Or, or I'll repeat what I said at the start if you want, but you can go for it. No, go ahead. Repeat what you said. That was perfect. Right, uh, I would have said at the start, guys, if you missed it. Um, if you're new to APM research, you're going to find our research and decodings indicate we live in a technological construct that has very intelligent design. The geo, petro, hieroglyphs, sigils, cartouche, and even some sacred geometries are one and the same. Technical type schematics of technologies relating to the underworld, technologies that are responsible for creating and moving luminaries and they're involved in pretty much most of nature itself. So this is um, APM research, this is what we're based on. You know, we look at the, the world mechanics and how it fits into a world model and how we have to decode everything to put everything back into its original context, which is what we're trying to do. All these things we're looking at, it all relates to the same thing. Everyone considers it to be humans, it is not. It's relating to technologies, processes. This is what's called the uh, inscription, the creator's glory. 
the glory being technology that's responsible for what you're seeing in the skies and most of nature's events. So I hope that explains it good enough. <laughs> yep. Perfect FPV. Yep. And in the beginning, we also showed um, a grid of electrical schematics, which are these. I mean, they are just pieces of these. If you look up electrical schematics yourself, you will see that these sigils look just like um, the different components of electrical schematics, which tells us that this is a technology that they're speaking about processes. And when you relate that to our world and the fact that you know, scriptures talk about fallen angels and different things and how they are, they've been put in the earth to remain there until, I mean, what, the world is no more? I mean, till the great judgment. <laughs> um, but anyway. Uh, Native Indians asking a question there. His question is, why did they not teach this to anyone but a few? And it's up to all of us to spread this whole teaching. But well, what we're saying here, Native Indian, is everyone did know this. You know, this is what the geopetrol and hieroglyphs and everything is telling us. Everything we look at in ancient times, we can see relates. They're all depicting the same thing, just different ways of depicting the same story, really. So that everyone around the world, you know, this is not unique to one location. It's not, you know, everyone around the world was being taught the same thing. Or they just depicted it differently to other locations, but they all have the same meaning. You know, you're going to find, you're going to have, possibly four or five, six different names for, for the sun alone. So, but it, you know, it's all always relates back to the technology and its workings. That's, that's what we need to highlight mostly. Everyone was being taught the same thing and how it relates to technological processes running this world. And then um, Barry wants to know, is there sacred geometry in Google Earth? Um, you know, um, yes. <laughs> uh, I have videos, you know, showing different lines in Google Earth. I know some people just, you know, they think Google Earth is fake. And, and I know that you talked about this in the beginning of the stream, brought it up. But however, Google has sent these balloons and these cars all over the entire world. Um, to photograph the topography and the layout of our lands. You know, is it exact? I don't know. I haven't been all over the world. I can't tell you if it's completely accurate. What I can tell you is that the lines that I have traced out in the ocean match up to Nazca lines. Uh, just probably a lot more detail than the Nazca lines have. Yeah, the Nazca lines are like uh, a very condensed... Um, blueprints of most of the world's workings. Now, they're not all visible yet, you know, lots of them hidden under mud and such, so they're going to keep finding them all the time. Um, but one found on the ocean floors and places like that was full-scale drawings and and tracings of the same technologies, you know, on, on a grand scale. You know, we're looking at, you know, but people keep referring to human-sized terms. We can't. We've got to take humans completely out of the equation. We're looking at giants and titans and whoever the creator may be here. You know, th this world isn't small like they're suggesting to us. It's not a spinning ball. It's not a small strip of land. It, to accommodate these beings alone, it has to be vast, very, very, very large. So, so you know, all we've got to work with is a, a strip we call a map. We've got a strip of data that we can play with and research and work out, you know, all the glyphs and things that people's recorded over time. That's all we've got to work with, really, you know, putting, putting that picture back to where it belongs. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the next one, as soon as I, <clears throat> can figure out where we're at now, where are we at? 
Oh. Uh, we should be on 16 now, I think. Yeah. So, Lerere. Um, Lerere is known as a Marquise. Marquise, who is over 30 legions. Uh, he is known to cause great battles and disputes. He is depicted as an archer, also carrying a bow. And looks like Sagittarius again. Um, so what we need to stop and kind of talk about now is the fact that some of these things have been um, kind of repeated. And, and I think that a lot of these things might be the same thing with just different names. Yeah, or parts. You know, what you might be looking at here, guys, is all the ones on this sheet might actually be all in one location. You know, different different technologies in one location or area. That's, you know, we've got to consider that because it doesn't really label, what, you know, what locations are where. Sometimes it gives directions that they're facing or, you know, that kind of information, but it's not placing them... You know, what's on this sheet here, all these here might actually represent one large process going on. <laughs> you know, that's what we're going to, this is what we're going to try and work out. Is this all, all these on this sheet, one process, and these are all the pieces of it? Or are these all separate processes working with something even bigger? And I kind of want to go back to uh, well, Maybe we could get to it in a little bit, but I wanted to kind of show the Google for a minute because I have some screenshots that I had on my computer of Google. Yeah, sure. Well, do you want me to present you? Yeah. Can you present me? Yeah. Hold on. Uh, am I going to, hold on. Can you not present me first? Hold on a sec. No, um, so I can pull up the photo. Yeah. Yeah. You're not presenting. I don't screen share the link. Yeah. Well, uh, share the uh, application, not the full screen. Okay. So if I can do that, cause sometimes my photos don't work like that. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to work because it's just going to show. I don't know if it'll open. Um, I don't know if it's going to open one by one. Or if it's just going to show. Yeah, it's just showing my folder. It's not going to show my pictures. So. Hold on. I'll uh, stop presenting it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to stop, stop uh, sharing one. Okay. So, yeah, sorry about that. I would like to show them, but I don't want to present the link, so I'm not going to do that. But I do have videos on my channel that outline different parts of um, what's in the ocean floor. So, anyway, back to the sigils, because that's what we're doing here. So if we look, um, Lerere also has two of them, same name, but they're different processes. We have arcs in there. And Rose, anytime you want to jump in and add anything, please <laughs> feel free. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having a, hmm, arch. Oh, so like in um in the hieroglyphs quite a lot of the time um when i see the depictions as processes as opposed to um a story about people a lot of the time they'll have a bow in their hat one of their hands and it'll either have crossed 
arrows or no or an arrow in one hand and crossed and this reminds me very similarly to that um and he destroys so then that would be similar to what i was thinking about um an exhaust maybe function you know a removal of spent fuel maybe very possible yeah, yeah i mean the archer to me suggests it's aiming a signal in a certain direction mm. but when i think of archie you know it's pointing an arrow in a certain direction so it's it's obviously facing that way and something's going to be going in that direction from that location that suggests um, I was just going to re respond to something someone said in chat. Hold on a sec. Uh, Barry Strain said, Google Earth depicts Brahma at Sinai and the crucifixion in the mountains below Galilee and between Jordan and Israel. What we've got to be careful with here, Barry, is man renaming countries, seas, rivers after scriptural names because that's, that's what's been going on. The Israel today that was invented in 1948 is not the Israel from scripture, in our opinion. This is the problem, you know, the Red Sea. You're thinking of a sea, an ocean, a sea. When, when I see the Red Sea now, I think of the lake, the bubbling lake of fire down below, lava. So we're going to be very careful about locations and names and locations because it's easy for someone to name a country after somewhere else and that's going to cause more confusion. So we, we have to take all that out of the equation. We don't we don't entertain that. We think, no, let's, let's keep it all technology-based. We know it's down below. We know every country's got it down below and we've got to you know stick with stick with that kind of knowledge and be very wary of names and places because they can be changed easily yeah yep and again if we step back to these schematics these are showing us exactly what these sigils are doing you know, and you look at the squiggly lines with the arrows, those also um, represent a heat source. I know you're not presenting me, but you can see what I'm showing FPV. Um, on the very last row, the next to the last one in the right hand corner, it's showing us that these squiggly lines with the arrows are heat sources. They're radioisotopes which also have to do very much with uh, accelerators and uh, volcanoes to relate it to our world volcanoes, you know, yeah. um, you know, um, some of these, I don't know if you were listening cause you had a phone call, but these arches also are a way to bypass their, their bypasses. So they can go from one, uh, magnetic to another bypassing stuff that's in between which also would relate to um, our antipodes or the earthquakes that happen on opposite sides you know excellent, one causes excellent. the other yeah excellent for that one and it reminded me straight away of some of the glyphs i was working with on the nasca line you remember how, how it placed the the triangles over um, volcanoes yes <laughs> it lined up perfectly didn't it Yes, it did. Um, you know, what we're looking at is a magnificent electromagnetic world. You know. Yeah, a lot more to it than meets the eye. Definitely. <laughs> so, so yeah, these, these schematics are key. They really are. They're key in understanding uh, these these sigils and what these processes are yeah. for our world. Yeah. Whenever, you know, we're never going to fully decode what all these mean without extra help or more knowledge and probably um, traveling, <laughs> you know, going exploring basically full exploration. We need, we do need full exploration. Like everyone keeps saying, you know, we're, we're not going to prove anything. So the only thing we can prove is, what we're seeing in the sky with the halos and how it relates to things going on below. You know, the halo, you look at the halo in the sky, that's clearly local. <laughs> if, if that halo wasn't local, then it must be one hell of a size if the, if, the, if the sun's millions of miles away and we're seeing this around the sun. 
no, it's not happening. This is something local. It's a local event. Everything's local and close. Made in Texas wants to know, is this like the Collider CERN? Um, well, I mean, yeah. Well, to, to word sort that of. would be, the best way of wording that is, uh, yes. <laughs> CERN is basically, if you look at CERN, the configuration of CERN, where it's got the halo and a small halo, and now look at the sun, and you're looking at exactly the same thing. It's a reverse engineered copy. There's no, there's no ifs and no doubt about it. It's, it's a copy. Uh, well, saying that, it might actually be one of the original ones. <laughs> you know, when you, when you, you got to consider now what, what's really going on. There's an underworld. There's people hiding it, so they're going to now try and claim ownership of it and possibly claim they built it over time, which is what's what it looks like. What's happening now? You know, China's going to be launching a, a, a copy of the moon soon well ask yourself how can they copy the moon <laughs> it's easy if you've got access to the technology that's putting it there in the first place isn't it so they're going to propel a large rock up into space and <laughs> spin it on its orbit and it will just sit it's ridiculous isn't it really yeah it is it's, well, it's man it's man it's man playing with technologies yeah. And in our next video, we're going to show how it's possible that they could, in ultimately, recreate the sun as well. Yeah, that's but what I don't want saying. to give too um, much away. Yeah, that's what we're trying to tell people. Uh, made in Texas, you know, the the technologies man's using today has been derived from or copied from what's already here down below. You only, have, you only have to look at uh, Nikola Tesla's work and Walter Russell's work and look at some of our research and how it factors in and how on, on world mechanics and it's the same thing, just scale down. All we have to do is look at what man's doing and scale it back up to see where it came from. Um, so the next one is Zephar. Um he is a duke, and he resides over 26 legions of inferior beings, spirits. I mean, call them what you want. But the so that tells me the pieces would be of they have less to do. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not quite as yeah, not quite as in um, as big as uh, frequencies or energies coming from the inferior ones. So if they're called inferior, they probably have less responsibility. <laughs> yeah, less duties to perform. <laughs> um, he again is depicted in red and with armor like a soldier. And yeah, that's all I have for him. <laughs> Which number are we on here one? Which one was it? We are on number 19. Yeah, it looks pretty similar to one we just spoke about earlier, but a different configuration of it. Yeah. You know, you know, words like dukes and presidents, kings, queens, you really have to look at the etymology on those words because you know, man's applying it to human so you kings and queens, rulers. You know, and when you look when you when you look through scriptures, it does relate to things like that, you know, it's the laws and the rules and the stations it's you know it's it's the obvious it's relating to technologies below to us go ahead we, well. skip, we skipped 18 and that's where i was going with the uh radio isotopes the squiggly ah. line we see in 18 is um it's it's depicting a heat source radio isotopes which i was saying relates to volcanoes when you want to talk about our world uh you can present those um this the electrical schematics again yeah i'll, I'll present you now here you go yeah so uh, down right, in the right hand corner you can see you can see the squiggly lines with the arrows it is you know this is showing us the points where that guy 
Eligos <laughs> is representing volcanic activity. Yeah. When you're talking about also, our world. I would also add that shape to the uh, sine wave. That's the kind of sine wave we see with the sun return path, remember, on the mimic map. Similar kind of path to it. Yes. So, you know, it, it could be electrical sine wave. That could be the equator, that line across the center. And that cross shape thing down to the bottom could be the southern gates. Yeah. Just, you know, just to relate it to the map or model. It yeah. could represent that, your east, west, your south, and something going on up the center there. Are you presenting these? Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, no, I was before. Uh, I, was, I thought you'd finish, uh, so I switched back. Okay, the back yeah, no worries. No, no, it's okay. I was just pointing out we missed the one. Um, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't um, use the, uh, everything from the modern day schematics because it's going to be totally different. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they'll have worded it, hide it, and you know, change some a few things around. So we can't say yes, this is one hundred percent that because it might not make any sense anymore. Or what it's really telling you. Um, so... You know, the, the, the schematics really just to show them a modern day design to compare to these old designs. Um, so since we accidentally skipped that one, what's the name of that one? Eligos. Um, so let's go back to 18. So Eligos is a Duke and he's over 60 legions. Um, he's known for discovering hidden things and knows the future of wars. <laughs> Interesting word and know the future of wars. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he knows that you know he can predict the events, it knows what's going to happen. Yeah, so makes sense in a technological term, doesn't it? Yeah, to know, to know, you obviously know the process. So he appears carrying a flag of iron and brings secrets to light. Yep, volcano. Possibly. You can even add to um, 18, Ross. It just, it looks like, it's because, especially because the, um, the heat source thing, it looks very much like a snake, doesn't it? Or a wave, again, like you said, the thing. Um, but the way it was described with the wars so wars is another way a word for destruction or and red again isn't it so that's why i thought it was like a like the volcanic um process maybe getting rid of something when we did the gates also the snakes were showing um kind of like how the how the stuff flows right didn't we we were yeah. doing that as like um it could be the lava flow. Yeah, definitely. The because waste. it's clearing the pipes, right? The way you describe it. Right. The waste. In the 12 gates, it was the waste. The snakes were the waste. They slither up from the underworld <laughs> and cause them destruction. It makes sense, doesn't it? But yet they know what they know when they're gonna happen. It's just we don't know, or we've lost the ability to know. We certainly have, yeah. Once over, everyone when you were all these mean, you would be taught this in school. Well, and actually, if you follow the Earth energy and how things happen and occur, um, these things are on a time system. You know, um, I'll I'll go back to what I when I first learned about earthquakes and stuff like that. I learned from a glober, and his name's Dutch. Since. Um, since then, I feel like my knowledge has surpassed his because I can see how the world works relating to this grid. However, 
what he is very good at is telling you exactly when and where earthquakes are going to occur and what volcanoes are going to erupt. And he does that by following the flow of energy. Just want to put that out there. These things are very, very much, cool. yeah, these things are very much um, timed, you know, and they will follow a procession. If these events occur, A, B, and C, D will follow. It will happen. It's the way it goes. It's on a timed system, you know. So if you have two earthquakes that are very large and the center point of that, which is the fulcrum point, happens to be a volcano, you can almost guarantee that volcano will erupt. It, it's the way it happens. Yeah, so he's mastered you know, monitoring the events then, hasn't he? You know, the time. The, he's obviously, I wouldn't say he knows when it's going to happen. He's just figured it out by following the information presented and the, you know over time you will get, learn to recognize it which you have and i would agree that you've exceeded his knowledge because you can now apply it to the grid and you know you've got a, you've got a broader uh mind now on on world workings whereas dutch kind of thought you know he's kind of fixated on what he does and he's happy where he's at and as far as he's concerned he's living on a spinning ball barry said why do you think he does not see the ring of fire isn't a ring well, Barry, because Dutch is stuck on a globe, you know, and I'm not knocking him. So hope nobody goes and tells him that I'm dogging him in any way. But if he can't see the world laid out the way it's the way it really is, then he's not going to see that the ring of fire is actually the lake of fire that flows through the center. Yeah, you know. it's not. It's not. It's only a ring if it, if the you present that information on a globe or that projection of a map where you've got Alaska and Russia nearly touching each other. You know, they call that where that touches the that ring there. That's what they call in the ring of fire. But that map and projection does not exist. We can't find it. It's the the, the real world map, as far as we're concerned, is the Mercator, which has been derived from the map we're using, which shows you a lot more in the, in the north and south. And this was made by series. By correcting the correcting the um, distorted data in the north and south, the uh, yeah you know you have you have surpassed Dutch's knowledge on on the world model, but you know I'm not, I'm the same I'm not going to knock the guy he knows what he's talking about, um, but you can take it further because you now factor in the grid and the mechanisms going on that's creating all this. Yeah. Yep. Um. So the next one is bonus. So we're back on track now. I think that's <laughs> number 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bonus is known as a great president and he's also a count, which the word count is interesting because you mm -hmm. count on a timing system. Uh, bonus appears as a big snake and he carries a sharp sword in his hand. He is the creator of past, present, and future. Yeah. He oh, rides a white horse. Sorry, he rides a white horse. And he is known, this is kind of interesting, he is known to take people from one place to another in just a second. And, you know, we, I take out the word people, because this is other people's depictions, but that tells me that he is an energy transfer very, very fast, very, very quick. Which you can probably re relate to uh, crystals. Yes, exactly. Exactly, because they can conduct the energy very, very quickly. And, a, you know, they cut, crystal, they cut a crystal a certain size for a certain frequency. So, as you count, you know, it, it, <laughs> that makes sense, that, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a, it's a crystal cut to a certain size for a certain count of whatever's flowing through it. I'm sorry, Rose, what were you going to say? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Sorry, I didn't realize I was on mute. I was just pondering to myself while you were, <laughs> while you were talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it definitely sounds like... Um, it even looks like a switch, doesn't it, where it's letting something through. 
you know, the um, yeah, and almost that piece of the looks like a coat of arms. Yeah. So, and how it's quite um, square, where which is unusual. We haven't come across a square like. Um, signal yet so well also square waves yeah. are a timing system oh. that's what square waves yeah. do they are a timing <laughs> system perfect anything else on 20 or shall we move on to 21 <laughs> Yeah, also, the sword on. kind of suggests maybe a pendulum accounting of something to and throw, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, next is Bathin, um, also as a duke. Under his command is 30 legions. What Bathin knows about is precious stones. Also can bring... They say men, but bring things suddenly from one country to another. Um, also, well, well, in that sentence there, one, I would say what they're calling men now is actually, you know, a possibly a luminary, and it's involved in moving it from one location to another. Yeah, so, you know, the word men, we have to remove that or replace it. Men... I would replace with, you know, it's that when you worded that there, it sounds to me like it's helping transfer something from one location to another. Yep. Also, Bath and again, repeated. Look at the two. 21 and 22 both have the same thing again, but different processes. And the 21 looks like it has the moon in there. See that down at the bottom right of it? Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like a crescent moon to me, but. What if it's part of how the elements are deposited or created along the sin wave? Because of the creator of the precious stones. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, related to elements. Well, I would say that I would say all of them are creating various types of elements due to that the nature of that process. Um, Moon-wise, I, I would say you know if it's a locate, obviously it's got a location. So any luminaries crossing that location is going to be affected by it. Well, not so much affected, but I would you know proper words probably guided. You know, it's probably guy helping guide. Something else interesting about these two. Um, see how it kind of looks like a face? I mean, we all see the, how it kind of looks like a face, right? Yeah, on the left. Yeah. And both of them, the left and the right, number 21 and 22. Yeah, the right one's with his eyes closed. <laughs> well, actually, what that, what that is referring to when you look at electricity and the going back to the schematic, you know, we can relate it to everything, but... Um, number 21 is representing a female because of the way the two circles with the eyes looking closed are. And number 22, since there is no little line coming down, that is a male aspect. So we're looking at female male, which is a positive and a negative. Yeah, very good. Yeah, probably deduction there. Cool. Yeah, and if that is a moon in the female, that's perfect. Again, isn't it for That's exactly what I was thinking? <laughs> because the moon is there, it's also <laughs> yeah. yeah, excellent stuff. Excellent. <laughs> Anything else on that one? No, that's it for me. You're right, though, it does look like um, what they were saying in chat. Um, coat of arms does it you can probably imagine now where a lot of these coat of arms come from what would they really relate to especially the eagle and you know certain types of birds but we're going to go into that a bit more in the next video
I'll leave that for now. Yep, so the next one is Salos. Um, also a mighty great duke. Rules 30 legions. Um, this one says that he's known to be a pacifist of nature. Um, he's a soldier wearing a do so crown and rides a crocodile. Yeah, the, the pacifying, you know, you look, you look at calm in nature there, so it helps calm nature. It could be a reverse, um, a reverse rotating um, vortex, you know, to slow winds down. Say so you've got a, a, a tornado coming towards your direction. This could help pacify that by reverse, you know, putting air in, uh, rotating the floor counterclockwise to the floor of what's coming towards it, and it would help nullify it, neutralize tornadoes and such. You know, if it's a if it's a rotating kind of vortex kind of idea, you know, what you follow. I do. If it, was an if it was an accelerator, yeah, you know, it would be counter effect the nasty effects of something larger nearby. How do you spell Dussel Crown? Sorry, Rose, what was that? In the description, uh, one said that uh, Salos, Salos, sorry, wore a Dussel Crown. What? How do? You, how did you spell that? Let me find it again. I moved on. Um, sorry, <laughs> it's okay. D U C A L. Okay. Hmm. I like the way it looks really, really well balanced as well. It's exactly identical except for one thing to the right. And even his the name S is balanced as well. Hmm. You do see a lot of them words in scripture and things, don't you? you know, balancing and <laughs> the, the, them kind of descriptions and you're trying to... I can remember myself reading through certain parts of scripture and thinking, what's, what's that got to do with anything, you know? You come across sentences in scripture or, you know, a little passage that mentions something that's totally out of context to the rest of it and you think, What's that got to do with anything? That's the hard part with scriptures, isn't it? You know, we haven't got a complete picture of what scriptures were really telling us. Our modern Bibles and such have been watered down and modified to hide, again to hide what's going on and how it works. So the only thing we can go back to is um, scripture-wise would be or the oldest ones you can come across. And before then, we're looking at glyphs and such. So it's always, you know, it's always the same kind of mentions, isn't it? processes and things going on that don't relate to anything human really that's why you know that's why it surprises me when people keep applying the human scape the humans to what they're reading in scriptures and it's no way in no way shape or form actually relates to humans the older back the further back you go the the older the information you're looking at i think you're going to better, get a better decode from it these new age books, well, they're just there to hide and falsely represent how this works. Okay, so ducal is an adjective pertaining to a duke, late 15th century from Old French, from late Latin ducalis, from Latin duce, genetive ducis, leader, from the pi root duec, to lead. So. so it's a forerunner. Yeah. With a Duke Crow Clown, that would say that he's um in charge of something. In well, 
If it would be in charge of calming things, that would make sense. Yeah, counter effects, something else, it seems, doesn't it? It's obviously needed to counter the effects of someone else going on and pacify it. So, yep. Um, so number 24 is pers person. Person. <laughs> I, think on, I think we're on 23. <laughs> and we just did that, Salos. Oh, so we did, yeah. Yeah, that was the one that we <laughs> I was looking at. I was looking at the 22 then when we were talking about 23. <laughs> Yeah, because she was talking about the balance of the two, and it's yeah. the calming effect, the pacifier. Um, Balancing those in scales could be, you know, it could be, could be. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, it, you know, zodiac related. That isn't it? Yeah, like Libra. Did you just say Libra Rose? Yeah. Yeah, the balance. Yeah, you know, and it's just the first zodiacal sign into the underworld as well. Now, when you look at our seasons video, when you've got the 12 gates, you've got all the um, zodiac there. So, you know, what you're looking at is a, a line directly from those gates relating to that um, zodiac. So it's something yeah. in, in line with Libra then, isn't it? Yeah, and if it's the calming effect of nature, then October is the beginning of the real fall, isn't it? The real autumn season where everything is calming and slowing down and um, pacifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, oh, it gets ready yeah. to calm down and, and die away for the season. To be reborn again in March, the spring, which everything would get really active, right? When what Aries and Taurus begin to roll around. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've got to factor in the seasonal switchings and things going on here as well. There's a lot, of, you know, there's it's a lot to look at, isn't there? And factor in and consider. There's it's, so it's much. Nice, it's nice that it mentions, you know, all these references to the zodiac or constellations because it helps us look at the. The seasons video and relate it to seasons it's well seasonal switching isn't it yeah which would mean that these guys fire up you know especially the ones that are mentioned that they come around in Sagittarius you know that tells us that they come on when Sagittarius comes into play yeah makes perfect sense to me but there is a lot and that's why we don't typically go live to do these things just so everyone knows because there's a whole lot of stuff to take in and look at before we can put out these videos. That's why it takes so long also to make them because we have to look at everything and then yeah. make sure that they all correlate. Cause if there's stuff that's, you know, not going together, then we have to find out why. And that's not the kind of information we want to end up putting out is stuff that something else can kind of debunk it in a way. So it's a whole lot of stuff to look at and, it's a lot easier now that we have kind of have more people involved. Don't you think FPV? Because there's more people that, I mean, each person knows something different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, perfectly. Because uh, like Rose, you know, she's come into APM. She's recognized it. She's looked at her own research. It relates to it and she can help explain her research further now because of what APM's passing over to Rose. You know, she can see a bigger picture now with her own her own research. I was going to say a little bit of research there, but that's all that's all anyone's got. You know, we've all got little bits of research or area of areas of interest that we've all looked at. And until we've got a, a full picture, you know, we just we've all got little pieces of the jigsaw. Where does it go? You know, we're juggling jigsaws around. But in APM, we've got the map on the grid, and it's just a case of you know where does it go? What part of this goes in that grid somewhere? So that, that's really what we're looking at those six houses and nine rooms down below, <laughs> you know, they've got uh, technological processes going on and all this fits in there somewhere. It's just so big a picture and we've got so many things we can reference. It will lose people because like Bond just said, we've looked at a lot and a lot of things over the last two years and it just keeps coming back to this grid and map. You know, we can't, we can't hide that. 
we wouldn't be publicly talking about what we're talking about now if we weren't confident with our research. It keeps giving us new avenues to explore and answers for questions we never never even had before. So it tells us we're on the right path. So, you know, we're not going to stop now. It's it's progressing nicely and more and more people are recognising pieces of it and hopefully they can take some of this away and it'll help their research and, you know, it'll give them a bigger piece of what they're looking at. Yep, I agree. Um, so and it's next a lot is of fun. It drives you completely nuts, but it is a lot of fun. <laughs> it does drive you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll do that. Um, so next is person. Okay. Uh, is a great king. Is being served and obeyed by 22 legions. Um, person knows of hidden things. Can find treasures and oversees the past, present, and future. Taking... Oh, sorry, can I help? Oh, taking the aerial body, and this it says this, taking the aerial body, he answers truly of all secrets of divine things of earth and the creation of the world. Um, he's depicted as a man with a face of a lion, lion carrying a ferocious viper in his hand and riding a bear. Before him can be heard many trumpet, trumpets sounding which, wow, like that's a great description. Um, you know, we have the bear in our luminaries, and the trumpets always take me back to those sounds that we hear, those sound anomalies that people hear that they can't figure out where the heck they're coming from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wheels, horn. I like the I like the design there as well. That line that line going up to the right with the coil of wire. You know, you're looking at it's like like right there. It's like either an antenna or a coiled piece of wire, isn't it? Like you would use in electrical terms, big coil. Um, also, it's a transformer. Oh. The uh, this the thing that looks like a rake. That's a transformer. Just so you know, in electrical terminology anyway, that's what it is. <laughs> and I would say that depending on which way it's facing, that'd be the direction of its flow. Interesting as well that it mentioned the aerial body. You know, what aerial bodies are we looking at here? Obviously, it's luminaries, isn't it? What else could be considered an aerial body? Well, yes. And the body yes. Is, could be like, this. Um... Sorry, so, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, no, you're right. It, it looks like an upside down person with a propeller on its head, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, that's just me. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> like with a little bunny rabbit tail. That's, yeah. somewhere else, that's somewhere else we need to watch out for, actually. The the orientation they're putting these glyphs and images in because I noticed this at the Nazca lines when they depict when they show you the Nazca lines, they're depicting it from an angle I would not use, I had to rotate it there. The map round, I think it was 90 degrees before I really realized what yeah. I was really looking at. And yeah, when you see them, you know, it's depicted in mainstream everywhere, they don't show you what we can show you at Nazca lines, but it's always from the wrong angle. So you're not getting, you're not making sense of it because it's just because just by rotating 90 degrees, it can throw you off. So, you know, we're going to be careful with that as well. Yeah. Well, and with that, even my little spider is usually depicted. Sorry. No, go ahead. Finish. Uh. Yeah, even even my the spider on my icon um, is mainly depicted without its long return leg, which is the last mm. leg. Is um, goes along a lot further, and that gets cut out quite often. So, and that's quite popular on. Um, tourist items for for instance so they're even now hiding the truth again by um, disorientating you how they all really look 
elongating them, shortening them, and um, showing them out of context from actually where they are in situ, like FPV just said. Yeah, it's gonna they're gonna do that everywhere just to throw you off. You know, it's not just uh, translations and decodings that they're messing around with, is it? It's angles and positions and name changes and country, you name it, you know, they, there's lots of changes happen. And that's that's what's uh, muddied the waters more and more. But yeah, interesting with a propeller because the propeller design, I've actually seen that on the Alaska lines as well. There's a I thought it was like a, you know, a little fan or turbine or something when I first saw it. It's like a flower with petals kind of shape connected to something else. So yeah, you can reference possibly part of that to something depicted at the Alaska lines. Do you want me to switch to the next set of images? Um, yeah, we can go through a few more. This is kind of going out a lot longer than what I thought, <laughs> what we planned. I kind of knew it was going to turn out like this, but. Yeah, I did. <laughs> we'll do half, eh? we'll do half of them today and do a, a, a part two another time, I think, because it will stick. We're on, what, 24 and there's 72 to get through? Or more? Yes. There are 72. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And there's some stuff that I wanted to bring up at some point, but not necessarily this one, about things that I found through our um, APM research library that tie into this too. So we um, we might have to do a recap over the two, however many videos this ends up, and then help add other different bits and pieces on top of that. What do you reckon? Yeah, it doesn't matter really about that, Rose, because you know this is just to get the sigils out of the way today. And Absolutely. Anything, anything between us finishing the next video and releasing it, you know, obviously we can put some of the best bits for this into there, and anything else that we find after today, you know, like you just mentioned, you, you might want to put more things into it. But so that that opportunity is going to come on the next video. So which we're not rushing out, you know, we've got too many other things to do with like these sigils. We've got some other decodings we need to do of certain parts of scriptures and relate it to events in the world um but when you know once they're done they, they then go into the next video which will be one big amazing video it's, you know it's probably going to be a few hours long the video but i think it'll be i think there's going to be enough there to keep people watching it you know it's not going to be like we're like we're doing today you know we can sidetrack a little bit and have discussions and things on the main video there won't be any of that going on it'll just be business as usual and research and decodings going out so yeah, good idea now, good idea. So what we should do now really is fly through them up to 36, get these, get the first 36 out of the way, and then we can you know, step aside and have a bit of fun, interact with chat a bit more and discuss things if you want to do it that way. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, because you're going to have a lot to cut out to put out yeah. just a video getting the info out. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, we couldn't put all these in the next video because even when it's cut out and we're all seventy-two, it's just, it's just too much to take on board. But as long as the videos exist in this kind of format, people, you know, this, this is still a good way of doing it because the people can see how we discuss things and and talk about this. Whereas in the finalized videos, we we cut all these parts out usually, don't we? Yeah, and I highly encourage people to take these sigils into other conversations and other chat rooms. Uh, you know, people need to kind of be aware that this is, these are processes. These are part of our electromagnetic um, creation. Yeah. This is I, why. Um, this is the whys. Like, this is why things happen. These are the causes. <laughs> they're, just, they're just not understood yeah. yet. Yeah. And yeah. other people that put out effects, you guys that are in this chat can share this with them as to why these effects are occurring you know yeah yeah it's the best way of doing it you know it's, it's always you know everyone's explaining effects it doesn't matter where you look you know well you know what we're not being egotistical or anything when we say we know now who's guessing and who isn't we really do and if they're not progressing, they've got something wrong in their data or information, and that's what's caused them not to not to progress. But whereas our research, it doesn't matter what avenue we look down now, we can progress any of these avenues further. We we really can. 
because it all it all relates to world mechanics. Yep, and for people that have questioned how do earthquakes work on flat Earth, which I plan on putting out a small video to kind of explain it, but just to mention it, all of these little circles that we see, all of the switching, you're going to have quaking. The same. This is going to happen. It's going to cause trembling in our world. You know, there's reasons these earthquakes occur. And there's yeah. a system to them. It will follow a progression. So Certainly where are we will. at? So what's the next name? I can't read that. Oh, you can. <laughs> Mar Marax, I see it. I got Hold it. On, okay. Sorry. I can zoom in if you want. Marax, yeah. Yeah, on these two, with with this sheet, you can see now they're they spread across onto two sheets numerically. But I'm going to modify that for the full release someday. Eventually. Yeah, it's in the queue. <laughs> As Jason just mentioned in the chat, guys, Tesla was able to produce earthquakes as research and it was confiscated. So that, you know, we, another thing to look at is why would they hide it? Yes, there's technology and processes going on, but should man be playing with it? Eh, probably not. But if they're going to hide it and do things to humanity they shouldn't be doing to keep us down and not learn all this, then we have to expose it, don't we? Yep. So, hello, Jason. So, Morax. <clears throat> Morax is a great earl and a president. He appears with as a bull with a human head and gives power to someone to read the stars. Lovely wording. And you look yeah. at it, it does look like a constellation, doesn't it? The, the design. Yes, it does. It really does. Um, someone who is very proficient in astrology would probably see that right away. Yeah, I'm not proficient in astrology, but <laughs> when you mention oh, stars oh. and you look at that design, yeah, that reminded me straight away of a constellation. Which constellation is that, Rosie? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be guessing that. Well, I don't know, but it looks interesting. I'm not having a look at my extra ones. Hang on. So it's got a bull's head, so that would suggest it would be in Taurus, right? That's what I would say, yeah. And Taurus is May. Or, you know, the bull, you could also consider the bull's head might just mean a toroid, as in an accelerator, a toroidal apparatus. So we've got a toroid or a, or a taurus. <laughs> yeah. Which possibly been the same thing in ancient times. Okay, so uh, we've got a small crossover here where... Uh, Taurus covers three extra constellations. So um, the first part would be Andromeda, which looks like a man, a person, a stick person. Um, Andromeda, the princess chained in space, waiting for her hero, Perseus, to rescue her from the sea monster is an autumn and winter constellation lying due south to her mother Cassiopeia in the northern hemisphere. To find her, first locate the bright W-shaped constellation of Cassiopeia near the pole, which is one of the easiest to recognize. One of Andromeda's stars also forms the corner of the great square of Pegasus, the winged horse. Beneath them, nearer the horizon to the south, in the area of the skies known as 
the sea in ancient Babylon, swim Pisces, the fishes of the zodiac, and Cetus, the sea monster, ready to devour her. In the centre of the constellation lies the famous Andromeda galaxy. Again, please forgive me. More than two million light years away, it is the most distant object in the universe, which we can see with the naked eye glimmering through the veil of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And then May 9th to the 15th is governed by the river of the night, which is called Eridanus, Eridanus, Eridanus. The river Eridanus was known as the river of night in ancient Babylon. It is one of the longest constellations in the sky, rising at Orion's feet and winding down almost to the South Pole. And it basically just looks like a sin wave, to be perfectly honest. Um, Arcanara, found at the southern end of the river, which is not shown in the image, is the brightest star in the entire constellation. It's best seen from the southern hemisphere, but it can be glimpsed flashing low on the southern horizon in October from the latitude of southern Florida. For the ancients, Ankhmar marked the end of the river and its most important star, as they were unable to see Ankhmar lying near the south pole. Using your map to help uh, both Ankhmar and Sankhmar will be best seen low on the southern horizon to the west of Orion's feet from the latitude of New York. And then the last little bit. Now, this is a small overlap for the last few days of May going into the next sign. But again, it's Perseus, um, which... Um, I don't know. Could be. Who knows? Um, the stars of Perseus lie in the rich star fields of the Milky Way. To find them, you should, to like um, to find them, locate the bright W shaped shape of Cassiopeia, the queen of the North Pole. Beside her lies the Y shaped constellation of the glittering hero Perseus, who is high up near the zenith in December in the northern hemisphere. Perseus is conceived by a shower of gold and his birth when he starts to rise each year over the northern horizon can be seen each August preceded by our brightest annual shower of shooting stars. The Perseids, which appear to stream towards us from the rising constellation. He sets in the west in spring and can be seen low on the horizon from the southern hemisphere between November and January. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah, that was a good it's amazing, it's, it is, isn't it? It's amazing that we're all tallies in and gives you, you know, expands your, your knowledge of what you're really looking at, doesn't it? Yes. When it factors in and, yep. you know, even the locations. Amazing stuff. All right, so the next one is IPOS. Um, IPOS is, a, again, a powerful count and prince and ipos appears as an angel with a lion head so we can probably say that that is to do with leo definitely um let's see the next one because we'll just move along quickly sort of is aim that's a pretty interesting name aim um, it is when you look at the design, isn't it? I can see a, 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 a bow there. <laughs> I saw that too first. That was the first thing. Um, Aim is a great duke, very strong, rules over 26 legions. He sets cities, castles, and great places on fire. Gives true answers concerning private ma matters. He is depicted as a man, but with three heads, one of a serpent, one of a man, and the third of a cat. Riding a viper and carrying in his hand a fire brand in which he sets things on fire. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Now these uh, these depictions that it uh, normally places on these, you know, when you have got the animals' heads and things, 
I would imagine the sarcophagi down below, in other words, the very large chamber these technologies are kept in, these um, these depictions are going to be on the wall there. Each one of them is going to have to have these depictions on them. So, you know, it's a, it'll tell you the name, it'll tell you all these functions, and it'll probably have, you know, similar designs to this on, on the on the wall, I would imagine. So, you know, exactly what the process is going on in that room. Yes. Um, the next one is ne Nebarius, <laughs> which, okay, it reminds me of Nabiru. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what I thought when you said that. <laughs> um, he is a Marquise. Let's see if I can find anything else on him. Uh, Where's my marquees at? Yeah, I've covered uh, Nibiru, Nibiru before as well, haven't you? Yes. Might find a bit more information about Nibiru in this passage so, you're going to read out then. Nibirius is supposedly the most valiant marquis, has 19 legions under his command. Um... He's known to restore lost dignities and honors. He appears as a three-headed dog or raven. And because of his name, there's an association with the association with the Greek Cerebus. Yep, that would make sense. Yep, the Cerebus is called the Hounds of Hades. That's the multi-headed dog that guards the gates to the underworld. So look at a gate guardian there. Yes, which is exactly kind of what Nibiru was portrayed as, if you recall. It was a stationary turning point when you actually look up the origin of Nibiru. Just saying. Yeah, turning point's a good word in for it as well, because, you know, it's obviously directing traffic there, isn't it? <laughs> when you think of that, you know, it's directing luminaries. Yep. Which is, I think, what we were talking about uh, previously with Nibiru, wasn't it? Yep. And the constellation Raven is part of the dog star, which is Sirius, which is... Um, also follows a very similar path to the sun, almost identically. Um, only like a day or two out is this, and almost follows exactly the same sin path as well. Um, the next one, I'm not, let's see, glassy labelous. <laughs> As president, who commands 36 legions, he is the captain of manslaughter and bloodshed. He tells all things past and what's to come. It is depicted as a dog with the wings of a griffin. Um... says that it can make something invisible which is kind of what we see with the halo isn't it yes sometimes we see the halo sometimes we well most times we don't or when the moon disappears for three days yeah 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 you know to make things did, did it say visible or invisible Invisible. It can invisible. make things invisible. Yeah, yeah to, to make the halo invisible, you know, it's, it's just we heat the atmosphere basically and it will hide it, won't it? It'll hide the halo because we haven't got light particles in water droplets or ice or ice crystals interacting with it anymore, which is kind of what global warming is all about, isn't it? <laughs> Trying to hide it. Yep. Um. 
the only reason why I said maybe about the moon when it disappears, because it said about bloodshed and stuff. So it's getting rid of something in order for it to become out the other side, so to speak, you know, in the same way that the sun works, we think the moon also flows in a similar way, don't we? So hold on, I'll be right back while you guys carry on with this conversation. Give me one second. Sure. Okay, well. You know, it's just yeah, one oh yeah. Things, you know. Carry on, Ross. Just if it's to make it invisible and then to get rid of um blood and it used blood specifically, didn't it? Yeah. You know, instead of No, we've seen that we've seen in the remember this world gets female, sorry, and also like the menstrual cycle and everything else. It's that's why I specifically thought it might be attached to the moon. It's not just one layer of stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah, but um what I was gonna say was you remember in the twelve gates where it showed you characters that had no head or arms detached. It could also just be a shutdown process, it switched off. Yes. You know, the, the, w that's how they related it in the hieroglyphs. They would have characters with arms missing or a head missing or something. So, you know, it's, it's just been switched off, basically, you know. But when you look at the depictions beside those, you can clearly see there's been a change and something's now no, long, no longer working. It's been shut down. So, you know, but yeah, I think uh, a, a way we can relate it to is um, you imagine someone tr trying to teach all this to someone that doesn't know anything about it. So you've got to simplify it and put it into human terms hmm. so you, you're going to come across a lot of human terms that don't actually relate to killing people and chopping heads off and things it's just the way they depicted it to help explain it that's all so yeah there's, you know there's a few angles you've got to look at there isn't there definitely always you've got to always consider everything that's the point isn't it yeah have to yeah Yeah, interesting stuff. Like I said earlier, uh, Rose, you know, we, we may never, fig never figure it all out, but sometime in the future, maybe other generations might, you know, put more pieces together. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah, this is definitely like the foundations of work to come, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of avenues here worth exploring. Okay, well, back to you then. Okay. But yeah, I agree, because I came in on that. This is definitely a foundation for, you know, more people to look into this. That's what I'm saying. Like, when you guys go to streams and stuff, you know, <clears throat> bring up these causes. Give people their whys. Why do these things happen? Yeah, um, you're gonna, you know, you're going to find there's no research out there really doing that at all. We have looked, you know, we do look around a lot and we're not finding the people that's on the same uh, kind of research wavelength, so to say. They're putting content out, but it's normally just repeats or echo chambering or, or, or they're just, you know, rephrasing things that they've read themselves. They're not actually... What people need to realise is everything we're looking at now in modern times, everyone thinks it's all done and dusted and it's all solved. No, nothing, nowhere near. We've got everything to look at and decode and put back into its proper context again and it's it's going to take a long time to do it clearly isn't it yes um so next is boone i believe where that's where we're at boone which that one looks pretty complex to me actually um this one's a duke this one appears as a dragon that has three heads. One head is of a dog. The second one is a griffin. And the third one is of a man. And this one's interesting because this one gathers around tombs. Oh, tomb. <laughs> gathers. <laughs> gathers around tombs. The, the glyph itself it actually reminds me of the, a lot of the main depictions. You remember the main ones? Yes. You look at the depiction, yeah. it reminds me of one of their type depictions. So it's obviously something very complex, or uh, I can't give it the words it needs, really. That, but 
Yeah, it reminds me of their type of depictions or something. And again, you know, the, what the mains have put out is the same as what you're reading here, really. It's just different ways of depicting it. Yep. Um, let's see. That's all I have on this one. Uh, just the power to gather upon the tombs. The Yeah. That's a very interesting trait about it. Um, yeah, tombs, you know, that might just be part of the shutdown process. I can see that one as a, I swear I see that one as like a 3D. I can see it <laughs> almost like a, a vessel. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> No, there's two of them. Okay, so hold on. I was looking at the first one, but actually the second one is also called Boone. So we're looking at a two-process something again. Or is the second one what's taking place inside the first? Ah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, there's booby traps everywhere with this, isn't there? You're gonna, <laughs> is that part of that? Does it go inside that? Is it something switching and it changes to this or... Wow. <laughs> yeah. Guard I, like, I like the sine wave on the right hand side of it though, how it's coming into that larger structure. Yes, I agree. And the arches, which means that it's gonna jump from one place to another. No, not saying too much, but you're gonna them shapes that you see in there, you're gonna see them in the next video. Now remember what I overlaid on the sides one. The shape. Yes. Oh yes. You see them. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, that looks like a location, to, doesn't it? That, or, so, or or part of a feature of that process. Garden plant says, if one does a sigil, one should not speak of it to no one. Well, that's speaking in the terms that they put this as magic. Okay, so we're not talking about these in terms of like a magic spell. What these yeah, are, <clears throat> what these are, are, um, yes, yeah, snipers kind of got it right. What these are, are processes. And you can look at different schematics or magnetics, electric, electromagnetic, and um, you can relate this all to our time system of our world. Sniper has it pretty close an angel and a demon at the same time and that'd be the positive and the negative the male female of the switching that we're seeing so when you're looking at these sigils all these little circles are a switching point and most of them are coming in sets of two you know there might be several of them but they come in sets of two that'd be switching from a positive to a negative or a lot of things refer to him as male, female. And you can go back to our Adam and Eve video and see what we're talking about with the male, female components. And how it relates to magnetism and electricity. Yeah, um, garden plants, that's what we try to, we, we take the human factor out of this in most cases because it's not really talking about humans. These, uh, what you mentioned there was would be a human interpretation of what they're looking at, but we think now that's how it's been presented to us, and it's not really telling you the truth. You know, everything's been a lie. What we find, what, me personally, when I found Flat Earth, I looked into that, I looked into, you know, following politics and see all the bad politics, and so you got into world mechanics basically, and you, re you come to a point when you realize, wow, they've actually lied about everything to hide this. Everything's been a lie, so everything is now open, open for full research again, and exploration. You've got to, you know, there's exploration research to do. We have to decode it into a technological construct terms, uh, from our perspective. Anyway, it's all relating to technologies down below. Uh, hope that helps. But yeah, you know, what they've done is they've, they've made humans very primitive in their teachings and fake decodings of what we are looking at here and everywhere else of all glyphs, sacred geometries, you name it. And that's why people aren't getting the cause anymore. 
they're getting the effects they've got all these things to look at that don't make any sense anymore but now we're making sense of them we're putting them back into their proper context where they belong where they were originally from you know and sigils are no exception they're not what people think these are more related to technical or schematic diagrams of technologies and then it's not not human related although it's taught to humans it's definitely not human related in terms of oh it means this or it means that or it means the other no throw them away you've got to throw everything away you thought you ever knew before you start looking at this that you know you're basically starting over again and relearning what the ancients knew because it was never about worship and religion it's science and knowledge we're looking at hope that helps me yeah we cross-reference everything we look into so many different cultures, time periods, hoaxes, alternative history, historic scripture, everything you could possibly imagine and then try and cobble together what they actually mean. It's, we've taken a long time to get to here, haven't we? We're yeah. Still learning <laughs> Very much. yeah, we haven't looked under every stone just about because <laughs> we have. We... Let me, Sniper said this is linked to Crowley and Kelly. So, absolutely, we looked at Aleister Crowley's work and he was depicting the same thing as the Egyptians. Um, the only difference is that he, he went around the whole world and he was in tight with the elite. And the royals so i would say that crowley was a teacher he was teaching these elite children how this world works and the processes work the alchemy of our world you know that's what i would think um when they were done with him they let him go just like everyone else you know he ended up being insane before he left yeah it will drive you insane trying to work all this out i would imagine <laughs> as we've seen with some people over the last few months uh wanna but yeah you know crowley yeah he, i think they, a lot of these guys knew how it worked but they they will twist it to represent something else and that's where you've got to be very careful because they are twisting it intentionally to mask and hide what it truly represents that's where we're coming from. We're putting it back to where it should be. You know, it's relating to technologies and processes. Nothing to do with the human factor apart from learning it. Um, I don't really know if Crowley actually did too much to answer Morning Dew. Um, um, he was a teacher. You know, he was teaching these people. The well, his profession was alchemy, was it not one? Yeah, his profession, he was alchemy, yes. Um, but did he do anything? You know, I don't, I can't, I, we didn't really find anything that he actually did, did we, FPB? I mean, we looked all through his no. stuff no. there. For, you know, I, I haven't read every book by him, but I'll tell you what, my brother probably has, and I could probably ask him at some point <laughs> because my brother was very big into reading all about Aleister Crawley. Um, but, he didn't seem to do anything other than teach royals all about alchemy and stuff and how to use it, how it works. Well, I'm pretty sure they could teach him a thing or two as well <laughs> that, he, that he probably doesn't know about. Right. And I'm sure he was in on all of the horrendous acts that are rumored around these royals and elites, which would be the reason that he is considered such an evil man just my opinion again i'm not no. the expert on crawley but looking at his work i can see definite correlation between that and other ancient texts and alchemy so yeah and what they will do you know the people hiding this what they will do with people that they recruit or take on board or that you know they're gonna put them in situations where they can get dirt on them you know they're gonna blackmail them the, 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 this is what's happening i think the people are being blackmailed and bribed and duped into into this kind of um knowledge and because they've been caught out doing things that you know they've made it a cult they'll they'll set them up and 
they'll get information on them. Right, if you ever tell about this, we're going to release this. So, you know, it's putting people into corners, basically. So they've got no choice but to work with the people hiding it, and no doubt they'll probably go missing if they do mention it. So, yeah, it's a crappy situation to be in, but this is what you're looking at. You know, to hide this, this is what's really going on in the background, isn't it? And you can see it in politics everywhere. Not just politics, religion and politics. It's infested with events and cults type behavior and it's all down to hiding this how things work yep um so renove which is the next one is a marquise and a great earl he commanded 22 legions um he taught rhetoric languages They depict him as a monster holding a staff. Also, the one who comes to harvest um, souls when they're near death. So I guess we can also okay. relate that to Grim Reaper, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, well, the Grim Reaper, um, I forgot the name of the Egyptian one now. <laughs> I was just going to say it as well. But yeah, you know, it's the shutdown process, the... It's, as, it's the off switch that we went through in 12 gates. It's that, it's that same process. It's, it's, a shut, you know, it's a shutdown mechanism of some type. That's what it's telling me there. Yep. Um, Rose, do you have anything to add to any of this? I was, yeah, I was just looking up um, rhetoric. Okay. Uh, from the old French rhetorique, from the Latin rhetoric, from Greek rhetorite, tekeno, art of an orator, um, speaker, master, speaker, orator, artist of disclosure, teacher of rhetoric. Root, were, to speak. Yeah, so it, that reinforces an off. Okay, so next is Bareth. Um, he is a great duke, powerful and terrible, has 26 legions under his command. He also tells things of the past, present, and future with true answers. He can also turn metals into gold. Um, he is depicted as a soldier wearing red clothing and a golden crown, riding a red horse. Um, Bareth was the element with which all metals could be transmuted to gold. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we could do some better for about now. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Bareth's got the Midas touch, hasn't he? <laughs> what an amazing description. Because, you know, we, we go back to the accelerators again, you know, the... the Harnessing of elements into matter. That's exactly what you're looking at there, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's got the capability of transferring elements into a matter, be it the matter in this case being gold. Yeah. So it's obviously attuned to a certain frequency for gold, that. And like we've mentioned before, you know, these shooting stars, they're just particles and pieces falling off star halos in the sky and just falling down to Earth, basically. This is where all these precious metals are coming from. You know, you go, you could go metal detecting and detect a gold nugget. And that's probably just fell out of the sky some time ago. This is kind of how it works. You know, these these events that we've discussed before, like you went through with the um, the beach showers one. Yeah, it'd be nice what? to know the meteor showers. You know, yes, the yes, showers, sorry. These, <laughs> just, these just particles and elements falling out of the sky, basically, and it's by the the circuit that they've been attracted to and accumulated on and then just fell off or through vibration or whatever. 
Yeah, it'd be it's, nice. It'd be nice to know where that is in the world, wouldn't it? That uh, <laughs> that particular piece of technology. Um, he found the squirrel says. Sorry, go ahead. You found the philosopher's stone. It's even red. <laughs> like in Harry Potter, because if it turns all crystals into gold. Right. Just saying. So Bareth is that. And it has a name. Um, did you know using Angelica forces takes some of your soul away using the demonic adds to your soul? It doesn't add bad things. That's the only perception of demons. And I didn't know that, but I don't know. You still have to consider what the soul is. It's mentioning now a lot of people again refer to the human soul. The soul in the technological terms would be the projection in the sky, in my opinion. The soul, you know, the soul is, say, the sun. The sun could be the soul of that technology. Sun, the sun's projector, basically. Yeah. So it can take some away and give some back to, which makes sense when you're looking at air luminaries. It can add to it or take from it. oh yes we're all definitely connected that way yeah we're we're definitely electrical type beings we're not what we've been told we are that's for sure and there's probably a lot more to it than that that i don't know about you know yeah <clears throat> They always seem you'll notice that in scriptures it'll revert it'll reference some things with something on a human scale and you can see that with um the chakras as well you know like throat chakras and heart chakras and things like that it's relating it's kind of related to a human thing but it's also there to tell you this work this is how it works in your human body and on the technological terms this is what it's doing down below so it's just kind of a, a reference really it's well, you know it's a cross reference it also says that we were made in their image so we function quite similar to the world you know the world has chakras we have chakras those are just the energy points you know, yeah, i would you... record that as well one you know when this is in our image it might not actually mean looks and build and design of the human body it might just mean the intelligence because clearly you're looking at a very high level of intelligence here that's created this in the first place. In our image, you know, we're intelligent beings. I think humans have become more and more intelligent through this interaction between the creator and the humans. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of sim uh, yeah, we, we function quite similar to our world. As far as we are electro, uh, elect you know, we have... Our nervous system, which is electric, uh, I can't really think of the word I'm trying to say right now. Um, so moving on, because I lost my train of thought, but we are biologically crystalline based energy based functioning humans. I mean, we really are similar to our world and intelligent with intelligent design. Lots of similarities. Anyway, I'll stop ranting about it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on. <laughs> A Staroth. Um, Staroth is very powerful depicted as a man with feathered wings wearing a crown holding a serpent in one hand riding a beast with dragon-like wings and a serpent tail nice depiction there you can imagine that's on the sarcophagi outside of it yeah um he is known for mathematical sciences and also can make things invisible 
to lead them to hidden treasures. I like that treasures bit it keeps adding in certain ones. You, you notice that it has been two or three now across the last 30, 30 or yes. so. Mentioning yeah. treasures, hidden treasures. Yeah. You know, you know, people are going to think of gold and things like that, but no, I think it's going to be knowledge and other information. Or it's something to do with serious the, knowledge. Or something to do with the markers where the uh, accelerators are. Yeah. They are our hidden treasures. Hidden could yeah. be um, underneath, as below, as opposed to, you know. <coughs> um, another I'm interesting word to hidden. <laughs> another interesting thing is they refer to him as having emerald breath. I missed part of that because I had a phone call then. Sorry. <laughs> they refer to him as having emerald breath. Interesting. They're bringing the emerald into play now. Mm. Lovely design there as well. We've seen that design before. The star. Yep. That suggests, yeah, it's looking like. In fact, if you rotated that star on a few times, you're looking at vortex maths. So, so there's secrets there. You know, you're looking at secret mathematical sciences right there in the vortex alone, which is what Tesla was involved in, wasn't it? I, I think Tesla had to make a whole set of new maps for people to understand what it was he was trying to explain. Emerald is the birthstone for Tor uh, for May, which is also Taurus. And Taurus is also ruled by Venus, the same as Libra. And Archangel Uriel. Lovely stuff. <laughs> good references, Aero. Yeah, very good. Uh, Fornius. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was just saying thank you. I was just... uh, Fornius is a Marquis, and he has rule over 29 legions. Uh, he teaches rhetoric and languages. And he is also depicted as a great sea monster. His name comes from Latin, fornis, furnace, or oven. An oven, was that? Yeah, his name in Latin comes from fornis or furnace or oven mm -hmm. if you want to break down the etymology of it yeah. and he is depicted as a sea monster so it's probably in a location under the sea i would imagine when it starts depicting the sea creatures and things on them mm -hmm. underwater volcano maybe i was thinking further deeper you know he's just based below the water somewhere <clears throat> Morning Dew said, don't all stars wander or I am in the wrong brain frame. Well, don't we have our stars that just stay in the same layout at all times and perhaps they do turn above or it appears like they move through the sky, but then we have our wandering stars, which are our planets. They move continuously all the time. The fastest being our sun and moon. Yeah, there's something else we're not sure about. You know, how many things are actually wandering around up there? We know the seven major luminaries, but I'm pretty sure there's more. Because um, Iron, if he was telling me, you know, some of the things he's picking up, moving and traveling from the west back to east, there's a lot more than seven. So when you to put that into context, really, you can look at uh, 
descriptions of the, you know, when the sun comes out, it's got this train that follows it. The train being more parts, you know, more things that's connected to it and helping make it work. So it may relate to something like that. There's more workings than just what you see, what you think you see. You know, a, a train, when you think of a train coming out, there's, you know, it's got a lot of carriages, hasn't it? So there's more processes than just the sun projector, say, coming out at any one time. So it would make sense that you would see more coming back going west to east. And that's kind of data Ron's picking up. Uh, carry on, Mom. Back to you. Okay, so... Where are we at? Are we on for us now? Yes, yeah, the last one, number 36. Okay, so I didn't find that one. I got well, last over. one for last one for today. <laughs> for today, okay. So for us, I have to find it. So you can talk about the picture while I try to find the information about it. Sorry. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, well, straight away looking at the image, you see how it's wider at the bottom, and and then it's that and sort of narrows at the neck and broadens out again. That's looking. It's looking like. Um, expansion going into a compression kind of depiction as in you know i'm say a magnet with it's the flow of a magnet you could have a wide magnet at the bottom and narrow at the top and it's going to force the flow tighter and it's going to increase the flow at the top of the magnet that's the that's what i was looking at that there the, the shape of it and again the crosses you know referencing what we could reference with magnets like with the adam and eve decoding Every time I see these crosses now, I just think of magnets. <laughs> Can't help it, but uh, you know that's what we that's what we learned from Adam and Eve, wasn't it? The the magnet. Mm -hmm. So and of course the little spirals at the sides. Yeah, it's harnessing. You know, what you're looking at is light particles being harnessed and transferred through a magnet. You know, people probably say what's well, flown through a magnet. In our opinion, it would be light particles. It's moving light particles along. In the same way a fiber optic cable is presented to, possibly. Yeah, yeah, same thing, isn't it? It's just transfer of energy. All transfers of energy in one way or another. Compression and expansion does play a big part in that as well. To help transfer it distance, you need to compress it and expand it, compress it and expand it, and that's how you can make it move distance. And we've noticed that with the the old power stations done the same thing. If you remember, you, they needed substations every so many intervals. Well, that, that was your compression point. So you had the expansion coming out on the on the wiring, and then it would hit a substation. It would recompress it and then expand it back out the other end again to another substation. This is how you move flow and electricity. Yeah. Nobody does it better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Forrest is a powerful president obeyed by 29 legions. Um, he is known for logic and ethics. He also is known for herbs and precious stones. Yeah, he so he's into that. Oh, sorry, carry on. Oh, he is invisible and can discover treasures and recover lost things. Um, it seems to derive from Latin for us, which means out or outside. Um, nice so it um, relates it to herbs and stones as well so you know out, outdoors herbs stones it's obviously got some effect on uh you know things things around us it's it can aid and benefit things around it yeah nature a season something to do with the weather maybe or 
because he's invisible. He you know, uh, I mean, when you look at plants and things, you know, a lot of people say, you know, they just re they just respond to the sun and grow towards the sun, but it's not it's not that's not the case really. You're looking at electromagnetics and things going here and everything, including us, we're we're in this electromagnetic like sorry electromagnetic environment and it's it does affect us all so some of it will be good some of it will be bad and in the case of what it's saying there about herbs it ob obviously helps plants plants grow yep if anyone's ever tried to plant things using the lunar calendar they will know that um if you plant things in between uh the new and the full moon they grow a lot stronger and faster than when you do from the full to the new. So that's a very good experiment that anyone can do at home, just plant a seed or a seedling in the different times of uh, the moon phases and see how they grow. And you, and, you know, you'll be quite surprised at the results yeah it's good uh, good ancient knowledge that i would say has been passed on you know what, what they call nowadays like old wives tales probably turns out to be actually true we, you'll find that it's like weeds you know they call the common stinging nettle a weed when in fact when you look into that plant it's got very good health benefits for you and and it's actually tastes quite nice if you've tasted nettles before so yeah you know old knowledge coming back here we, we need to regain this old knowledge because uh, as far as I'm concerned, our our uh, healing powers are in plants and herbs. They always have been, always will be. Not the doctor's chemical variant with serious side effects. No, that's not the. That's not. Uh, that's not. It's supposed to be. It's all supposed to be natural. Also, the great healer is also Jupiter as well in astrology. So it could be alluded to that. Uh, Invisible could allude to the fact that he is uh, an uh, underworld planet and considered quite often to be a negative influence astrologically when because he is a warrior. Um, but in fact, he is also a lot of fun and and a, and also heals you as well. So I'm just adding that little tidbit too. Well the, well, the good thing there, Rose, is, you know, everyone's pointing out these lights in the sky and saying they're billions of miles away. Yeah, yeah it's up there doing something very good for this world and the creatures within it. <laughs> How strange is that? Eh? <laughs> like it was meant to be, isn't it? Yeah, like it was created that way, a divine purpose almost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we're going to wrap it up, then can you present me? Yeah, certainly. I'll just shut this down. And there you go. So, right. Presenting one. Here you go. One. So we went through half of these today. And we'll do the other half um, whenever you guys want. Maybe tomorrow. Because <laughs> um, it took three hours to go through half of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, yeah, we're so, going to try again, try again tomorrow while it's fresh in the minds, as long as there's peace and quiet to do it with. <laughs> That's the hard part, isn't it? Getting peace and quiet to actually sit and do this together. Right. I'll make sure and get up since you guys are so far ahead of me. I'll get up early and see if we can't give it a go. Because when I say early, it's like middle of the afternoon for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's a little hard to get together because of the time differences, but... um. So just to sum up what we did so far was we went through them, we gave descriptions and we related them to stuff like this, which in my opinion is a breakdown piece by piece of some of their functions. You know, and we can look at different ones and we can definitely see how they relate. And then if you want real quick, we can look at these. So yeah, yeah, might as well show them all now. Uh, yeah. So these are, go ahead, these, you know, these are yours. Okay, yeah, you just go through the images if you want. And yeah, what you're looking at here, guys, is some of the Nazca lines that are line traced. And 
relate to what we're talking about here, you know, to this is where this research started, basically. We've, got, we've come full circle here. We're back to the Nazca lines, glyphs, <laughs> geopetroglyphs, geometries and sigils, and who knows what else is going to come along. But it's all, you know, what you're looking at is advanced technological designs carved into the into rock at Nazca, Peru, on a grand scale. I mean, there's one antenna there, five mile long. So you're not looking at humans. Mainstream will have you believe there's a couple of people with sticks carved these into rock at Nazca, Peru. When in reality, it's that it's such on a, it's on such a big scale, it is impossible for humans to even comprehend doing this. You could not do it, not on this scale, and not with that kind of de detail and design, and certainly not with that kind of knowledge of um, technical information. Because you're looking at antennas, switching mechanisms, triggers, accelerators, you name it. You can see all at Nazca, Peru. So, you know, my advice to anyone here, come play with the Nazca lines, put Google Earth on, go and start line tracing, and you'll find it's very addictive and it's going to reveal things you've never, never seen before because you will not see the Nazca lines depicted like we're showing you them. They show you little snippets of them and you're not seeing a full picture. You're not seeing any part of the picture, really, when you when you look at a lot of these images that they depict. You're only going to see them yourself in Google Earth. Like that image there, you can see a three-story, three-tiered level there. In 3D, you know, the, the Nazca lines to me, you best put them into a 3D environment or get the right angle and you will see what it's truly portraying in a 3D image, like that one's shown clearly there. And the same applies to the grid that we're using on our map, the Nazca Mandala and the Sun Star of Peru. When you pan around this, it shows you a six-tier pyramid below the map. You can't hide that. It's, it's pretty obvious and it jumps out at you in 3D. And again, you can reference that to what the Mayans and other cultures believe in. The, there's a pyramid down below, a six-tier pyramid, six houses, nine rooms. It just keeps getting referenced over and over. Not to mention how big these are compared to this town. Oh, yeah, look at the size of them. <laughs> yeah, this is an entire town. <laughs> Next and to... if, if you look on the bottom left, the yellow and green one, you'll see that's actually a big cog. Now, that there is probably the size of a house. Maybe bigger. <laughs> sure, look at it. That's that's just a cog. <laughs> so that there, what you're looking at there on our map would be would relate to the shutdown of the sun in the west. The solar clock, as that glyph's called, if you look at it carefully, it is actually an antenna. So it's a timed event. The sun arrives in the west and it shuts it down. So that glyph there, the one below it with the with the beams coming out, the yellow beams coming out the side, that would be the the luminary isolator. I would word it as it's isolating the luminary and shutting it down and it sends it back to the east on its return journey because on that on our map they're in the west another important one there one you see the guy in the top left you see his hand that is right hand rule that's another electrical term so they, they you know these characters are not just random people and you start line tracing it and uh, things around it you'll see it actually connects and He's holding the cable in his right hand. He's showing you the floor along that cable, and that cable goes to something else. So, yeah, very intelligent design right there at Nazca, Peru. And not only that, the grid we're using with the gates in the north, south, east, and west, we can reference to what Enoch and all scriptures reference, the gates in the north, south, east, and west. Portals, gates, it's the same thing. It all connects. It's all telling the same story, in other words. Yep. So you can take me off now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I there guess that's about all we have to show today. <laughs> yeah, it's been a fun few hours, hasn't it? <laughs> that flew in, that. that went really quick. <laughs> Very good stuff. So do you want to use one to shout out all the people in chat? Uh, sure. Yeah, go on. We don't do that very often, do we? We don't get the chance. We're never live. <laughs> we're live. So, um, of course, Jason and Squirrel Sniper, Head Basher, Morning Dew Garden, um, Garden Plants, Jerry, um, who else? I know there was other people here earlier. P9, don't forget Sandra. <laughs> for sure um she was invited but she was busy <laughs> oh we're on to one what i will say though is you know 
you guys in chat and anyone else that watches this video, if you've got information that you think is important or can further this research, by all means, get in touch. We are we don't have all the answers, and we're hoping people out there, you know, that have got the interest in other fields can apply their knowledge and research into parts of things we're looking at. Because that's how it's going to work. You know, we're all we're all going to end up working together, putting pieces of the jigsaw back in, and it's going to reveal a very big picture. Yeah. I know Midnight Gardener was here earlier, uh, Baron. There was lots of other people. My chat only goes back so far, so. Thanks. Morning, you Garden. You're very welcome, mate. And it's a team effort. You know, it's not just me. There is other people here doing doing uh, the research. You know, we 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 do it. We have to do it together. There's just too much of a big picture to look at for one person. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? You know, we we put pieces of it in and make it work because you know when you're looking at really is a technological construct all we have to do is reveal it and work out the processes which we which we are doing you know you go through some of our videos and you're going to see how we relate events and recordings and research to certain type technologies and how they really work especially like the halo videos you, there's no mistake in what you're looking at in the sky with those halo videos is there right. and it is local and close yeah, still, you know, still a lot to learn, guys. Still lots of fun times ahead. That's all I can say, really. You know, we've got fun times ahead learning and researching. It Definitely. just never stops. Definitely. Good stuff. So <clears throat> hopefully we'll be able to carry this on tomorrow and go through the other half. So get popcorn and drinks because it'll take another three hours. <laughs> 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 and that's just for us. <laughs> right. But I definitely say that everyone needs to take this information out into other streams because there's not enough people looking at the electromagnetic processes it takes to cause the events that everyone talks about in our world. That's what surprised me, one. But the amount of times the underworld is is mentioned in various scriptures, it's everywhere, and you don't see anyone talking about it. Why? It's yeah. so you know it's so important and so so related to how this world works. Everyone just seems to completely blank it and forget it exists. Right. And if you watch that um, that video that we made about the about the nuclear detonations, you'll see yeah. where they you'll see where these people are trying to get access to down below. It's pretty obvious what they're doing. Exactly, and everything else too, because fracking sites and mines and <clears throat> all of that falls where this technology is going to lay and how do we know that well because it follows the grid which is the plates of the world we can see that in our earthquakes and our volcanoes not to mention NASA like playing around with volcanoes it seems yeah they want to go underground now all of a sudden now they've been down there for decades <laughs> yeah we're just it's coming we're seeing it we're learning that this is what they're doing with all that money they're not going to outer space they're digging down always been going down down and out my opinion yeah, yeah they want you looking at lights in the sky and pondering those while they're busy stealing everything down below right so so yeah take it out into the streams bring it up get people talking about it that's what i say I'm usually so busy, I don't have time to go frequent all kinds of different streams, but I know a lot of people do, you know. Why does the moon look like it's not there when, say, it's a half moon? That's going to be answered in the next video. Yep. The moon, if you mean the moon phases, yeah, and eclipses, they're going to be answered in the next video we do. Yep. Well, the next the next big video, I should say, because the next video is probably going to be the half of this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the next actual video that we've all took time to put stuff in on, which will be released as a premiere, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll premiere it. Yeah, for sure. So. Give an advance notice because there's going to be a lot of information in that video. Jesus said it great. I came too early. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people are asking that though, but yeah, 
that's in the next video, so we can't give that away yet, can we? No. <laughs> now we'll keep some surprises back. <laughs> there was no way this could go into that video. It'd be a 12-hour video. Ah, oh, yeah, it'd be too long. It'd be too, <laughs> it'd be too much editing to do as well. Can you also get this off before we'd even got halfway through? We'd be on freaking Santos level on the amount of time on video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I need yeah. a lot of snacks. You got so, any thoughts and things you want to comment on, Rose, before we shut no. down? No, it's just it's just so exciting being able to do this live because I don't think a lot of people realize how much work we all do behind the scenes, even if we're not talking to each other every day because of life, the universe, and everything we're always working on something that um plugs into apm and another little piece of the puzzle and i find these types of live decodings really exciting for me because it's um it's a real-time treasure hunt and i get to exercise different parts of stuff that i know are connected but don't always know how until i apply it to apm so um yeah this is i enjoy i enjoy this a lot so thank you for uh, inviting me on the panel i've really enjoyed myself along with yeah. you <laughs> well yeah part of the team rose you deserve to be on the panel that's yeah and you know you can see it yourself like rose said she can go to somewhere now and decode it just by looking at it which is you know you know you're all going to learn that you're going to you're going to see things and decode it just by looking at it you don't need to know any description of it you just look at the design and say i know what that means i know what that relates to and it's as easy as that really isn't it that's a wayfinding you know everything you look at now it's you, you already covered it but it's just a depiction of the same thing or a different name of the same thing yeah, I love going to museums now. It brings a whole, I, I got really upset and disillusioned after realising that the realm I lived in wasn't what I thought it was. And then after that uh, initial shock of everything I've ever learned, I've had to re-examine, even though in the long run that is quite exciting. But now I get to really enjoy museums and stuff now and collate um, resources for our team and do live decodings of all the mislabeled things as well as laugh at the complete and utter obvious misdirections so yeah it's not all doom and gloom and heartache it can be quite exciting yeah yeah there's a whole new world out there waiting to be discovered <laughs> it's as simple as that isn't it yeah your thoughts what students in september <laughs> um i mean my thoughts are going to be pretty much the same as always you know we live in a technological perfection that's based on electromagnetics um i definitely say when <clears throat> The more we get people talking about this stuff, the more people are going to find things that relate and they're going to come to the understanding like we have. Um, you know, we have people that have come into this team, which is fantastic. FPV has been doing this longer than me and I've been with him for about two years now. And I mean, the correlations are, I, I, we can't even begin to name them all, you know like today was what we would normally do in a private chat, but we decided to put it out there live so people can understand how much it really takes to look at every single thing and try to get it relating all together. And there's probably more that we haven't even touched on, you know, that totally relate to this because you could really look at all kinds of different angels, which I have like this whole list, but I wasn't going to bring those up because that would have turned into six hours instead of three, mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're all, the same processes so 
Yeah, fantastic word, ladies. Good job. Yeah, yeah brilliant one. But I want to thank everybody for coming in to watch it because um, the more people that come in and learn about it, the more people can talk about it in other people's streams and how it relates to what they're talking about because it's all going to relate and it's all going to correlate. Yeah, it really does. You know, when you come to Flat Earth, you're presented with two very important questions, guys. What is creating and moving those lights in the sky? And only this kind of research is going to find that answer. You're not going to find it anywhere else, you know. The cause, we have to look at the cause and it can only be technologically related and we can see that everywhere now perhaps you guys will one day maybe you already do maybe you see things we don't we're hoping so because we want to hear what you're finding so on that note i think we'll call it a day there guys eh? yeah sounds yep. good yeah all right thanks everyone in chat and hopefully we'll catch it again on another live we don't do the lives very regular really very rare in fact but we'll try some more you know just at least to interact and that's the best part of being interacting with people in chat who's going to bring more information to the big picture. This is how it works. But anyway, thanks all, and we'll catch you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.